When I was trapped inside your love, couldn't break the chains. I asked God to strengthen me, pray to keep me sane. I was so numb to the feelings, it felt like no of came. I was so lost up in your drugs, I couldn't see a thing. All the all ache and pain brought me to my knees, begging the love to set me free. All the all ache and pain, asking God why me, praying for the day I see my jubilee. All the all ache and pain that was clouding me. Yeah, you need the strength to walk by faith and see All the heartache and pain All the heartache and pain All the heartache and pain mm -hmm. They say peace comes in the morning, just make it through the night but I remember being hopeless It's too weak to fight I put them drugs in my system That don't make it right But every time I hit the cup It made me feel alright I was trying to numb the pain Of you leaving me And all the voices in my head That said just let it be Only God knows the strength That it took me Watching you walk away Thought you was down for me When I was trapped inside your love I couldn't break the chains I asked God to strength for me Pray to keep me sane out king bro yeah, like, really is. like you know what i'm saying <laughs> like he's a boy if donald trump was a battle rapper he'd be serious what boy. he'd be so fucking he'd serious, be serious i never thought of that yeah donald trump I, was a battle rapper he'd be deadly yeah yeah I he would run that league he would run that league his insult game is serious you know what i mean like, yes it's, it's, it's you know what it is? You know what it is? He's, you know it is? He's an alpha, and he's been doing that shit at a high level his whole life. Imagine <laughs> imagine busting balls with, like, other billionaires. Like, what the fuck are they saying? And then nothing like him. He's a New York boy. At the end of the day. Yeah. He's a New York boy. Like, he really, like, I don't care how rich he was, how privileged he grew up. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, you still have to survive in the streets of New York, and that ain't an easy feat for nobody. That's a fact. You know what I'm saying? Like, Absolutely. You have be, to have the gift of gab in New York because right? everybody's so quick. Got to be about your wits for sure. You know sure. what I mean? One of my favorite comedians, Andrew Schultz, he's from New York. And he and I he and, and he's Schultz. fucking quick with that shit, yeah, dude. Yeah. His delivery's good. Like his monologues are good. Like his just his whole style of comedy is you can tell it's from New York. I love it. I love it. Uh I frequent comedy um what is it, clubs like mm -hmm. heavily like um yes. Like heavy. I'm heavy into the improv, and then not even the improv. Like if I'm in, um, if I'm in New York, I go to the Low East Side. I forget the names of these clubs. I usually just like jump on like Eventbrite and like mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. see who's performing. Mm -hmm. And I just it's so close to like writing music for sure to me. Like because timing and just delivery and everything. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I love to go watch comedians. And I used to um, like as a kid, I lived on like Def Jam comedy and all of them. But then Comedy Central, I watch Comedy Central like every night for years. Like I low key think I'm a stand up comedian in my head, mm -hmm. like, but it wouldn't be. <laughs> I wouldn't be a funny comedian. I'd be like, you'd be like a Patrice O'Neill, dude. Yes, yes. That's my favorite yes. comedian of all time. Yes. You want to know why? Because he when there were some times where he went on stage and he was just funny. And then there were some times where he just went up there and he just told exactly how he felt. And sometimes it wasn't always funny. It was just truthful and there was like a meaning behind it. Right. You know right, what I mean? Right. And that's why I loved Patrice so much because. It was just, he was purely authentic, no right. matter what it was. He was just going to be himself in every situation. And that's funny that you brought up New York in the comedy scene, because that's really where he got really big. Him and Billy Burr, which okay. are two of my favorite comedians. This, what's the Paper which, Tiger? Paper Tiger's that's, fire. That's him? That's yeah. Bill and Burr? It, oh, yes. Bill Burr, dude. His, some of his older stand-up is so fucking, dude. I go back to it all the time. But like you said, like you said that... Um, like it's like writing music, like you get inspiration from comedians. It, they do because they give you a different perspective on how to think about like mainstream shit. Right, right, right. That's right. why I love comedy because right. it'll right. give you like a fucking a, a point of view that's fucking hilarious that you would have never have thought of. Sure, you know what sure. I'm saying? That's sure. fucking that's hilarious. But hey, let me bring the show in real quick. I didn't even fucking do. We got lost in conversation. Oh, say less. I thought we was <laughs> we good. We are rolling. Reagan the realist, real boy radio. We out here, baby. Fort Myers, Florida. We back in action again. I'm here. I got a special guest in the building today. Two and a half hour drive from here from the other coast. My dog, Gem Hearts, in the motherfucking building, dog. Oh, what up, what up, what up, what up? How are you, Shout brother? Shout out to Real Boy Radio. Hey, man. man. I appreciate, appreciate you coming by, man. Hey, listen, 
Anytime, anytime. Hell yeah, dude. All all they can pay brought me to my knees. Begging the love to set me free. All all they can pay. Asking God why me. Praying for the day I see my How's your day been going? I know it's been kind of overcasty and rainy, but you know. It was good. The drive was good. Um, mm -hmm. Took the little slider out here, which is better because I've been crashing it left and right recently. Like, mm -hmm. I'm, I've become a bad driver. I used to be a really good driver. Is that is that <laughs> just with age? Do we just stop giving a fuck when we get behind the wheel of a car? I don't be buckling my seatbelt ever, dog. I'm terrible. I got to buckle because I've been not paying attention to the road. Like, texting and driving is bad. And I like to write music when I drive, which is really bad. Me too. Car rides are the best for fucking writing music. Yes. I just talked about that on the last podcast. Because yes. you focus on one thing, which mm -hmm. is driving on the street, mm -hmm. which enables your brain to tune out everything else. And then you just let the instrumentals ride. And before you know it, you fucking spit a whole album and you got in a two-hour ride. That's it. That's it. That's lit. Did you, did you, so did you write anything on the way here? I've, I've been, so I stopped writing a while ago, like physically writing. Right. And then I started writing again. I've been working on this record in my head for like the last two days, and I was supposed to record it tonight, but it's not gonna happen. I'm gonna record it tomorrow, <laughs> uh, which is good because I've been, I've been reciting it over and over, mm -hmm. and replacing words that, that don't flow, right? That that stop trimming the fat. Yeah, it's like I know what you mean. You know, what I'm saying doubling certain words instead of saying the, just saying mm -hmm. I and ah twice. It mm -hmm. make it gives it more of a bounce instead of for sure. You know what I mean? Like that's one thing. Like. Because I, um, my f formal education kind of disrupts my oh yeah level of music writing sometimes. Because gramma to be grammatically correct in music is to be bad musician. Yes, it's, you, that's a very good observation. That's so true. Everything that you've ever learned grammatically in school. Pays no throw dividends. that shit out the window. Yeah, throw music. it out the fucking window in music. No, that, none of that shit matters. No, of, there's no rules. There really isn't. You can you can make you can make words rhyme that don't even rhyme. No, you just gotta yeah. bend them the right way. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah, it's like it took me a it took it took a while to deprogram like the is is ands these eyes who's yous out of right. all like it's just uh, too structured. Yeah, it's like there's not it's not smoothed over. You know what I'm saying? It's it's. It sucks, like, like when you, in the beginning, like, now it's like, I think in rap, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. I think in music, I don't, I don't know, like, I don't know how to think in anything else anymore. Mm -hmm. It's like, for so many years, I think in music, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so, like, even in my everyday conversation, I'm rhyming, like, you know what I mean? Like, right, and yeah, people yeah. are like, like, damn, that was, how you, like, I, the, the way you, like, the, you strung your, your sentences together, like, right. almost sounds you have like a rhythm to how you talk. Yeah, yeah. It's like in, it's the same rhythm that you want to keep that practice from. Right. Like a lot of like professional speakers have that. Like they they're they're so used to speaking in certain like rhythmic patterns mm -hmm. or rhyming patterns that that's just how they be. That's just how they talk now. It just becomes like ingrained in their head, and like now that's just everyday conversation talk. Gary V. Yes. Tony Yo. Robbins. Bro, Gary V. is one of the best speakers ever. Not only because he's very articulate, mm -hmm. but he can take a complex idea and make a normal person understand it. And I, I feel like that is like a true sign of like real intelligence. Word, word. You word, know what I'm saying? Word. That means you know it. Yes. You know it. You can really, you, can te you can't teach something you don't know and you can't lead somewhere people you've never been. Facts. You, you know what I'm saying? Facts. That's so right. cool, man. Shout out to fucking Gary Vee, bro. One time for my boy. You know Gary what I mean? Gary Vee, you know? like, Yeah. It's like, <laughs> Out here trying to tell me to sell all my shit. Yeah, it's like, sell me this pen. <laughs> <laughs> you, know what, you know what I love about him too? Like he's, he has a great sense of humor and like he loves the fact that like people like mimic him and make fun of him. Like, yeah, I love yeah. guys that are just cool with laughing at themselves. It just makes me like them even more. He's like, oh, he's just a fucking bro. He's well, just a really smart bro. I, I, I low key like hated like I, my voice when I was growing up mm -hmm. trying to figure like that's, I, just, I used to jump in the booth since I was like 14, 15. Okay. But when I would record, I sounded so young all the time. Right. I hated it. I was like, why don't I sound like Jay-Z? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> but I'm f not realizing I'm 15 and he's 30. You know what I'm saying? But did everybody else tell you that you sounded fine, though? They kind, they tried. They tried. Yeah. But you're, it's, you're, it's no, it's no confidence. Mm -hmm. So. They can hear the fact that you have right, no confidence. Right, right, right. That's so true. There's, no, there's none. It's like, it's like, all right, without the, but it was just microphone shot. Mm -hmm. out the, without the microphone, I could freestyle to death back then. Like, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I could wow a crowd, you know, like, mm -hmm. 
And then you start to lose that and you gain your microphone strength. You know what I mean? Like as right. a recording artist, you transition from a... So do you think that like when you like, because I'm, I'm really good at freestyling, but mm-hmm. not so good at songwriting. So like, let's say like you're really good at freestyling when you were younger, when you first started making mm-hmm. music and then you transition to more like structured based songwriting, you kind of lose that freestyling ability because you kind of start focusing, your brain starts focusing more on like how you structure a certain record. You know what I mean? Um, Is that basically what you're saying? Yes. And yes, mm-hmm. I, I, for me, it, it happened that way. Some people can retain both of it forever. Mm-hmm. Like, um, I'm pretty sure I could freestyle, but it's like, all right, it's like basketball. Like, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a professional musician. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. I compare it to the NBA. Like, I'm, I'm in the 400. I can say I'm top in any of it, but I'm in the 400. Right, I play yeah, in you're the in league. the league. Yeah, you're you know in the league. Saying? Yeah, mm-hmm. And that's a, like, that's a, basically a street ball skill. That that's helps. A, that's a really good way of putting it, dude. Yeah, you see yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. like, it's like, if I get down in the park level and I'm playing street ball, I'm a v, I'm my training wheels are, a nice. kick back in eventually. You for know what sure, I mean? Like for sure. But um, I've never heard it put that way before. That's actually a really good analogy. It's it's I don't I've always compared basketball. I played basketball, so like I see that online all the time. Like, can you explain this in 2K terms? Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. It's like, <laughs> but it's hilarious. truthfully like basketball is about it. If you can't, if you don't understand basketball, like you honestly, ba- you it's can the simplest. Bas- it is. You can exp- or like chess. Like, there's just some games that are just like the perfect metaphor, like for anything, right, right, really. Right. You know what I'm saying? You know, I don't know how to play chess at all. Really? No one's ever taught me. You don't know any? Can you name one piece on the board? I don't know. Um, there's the bishop, the queen. Oh, okay. So you have there's a, the you have king. A, but you just don't know how the the pieces move. Kind of. I understand the concept of the game. Uh-huh. I just don't know the game, so I can't. Right. 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 I can't right. be like, oh, this, that was amazing move, or he beat him in uh, uh, a couple moves, and like, right. why is that so? That's how I feel about pool. Have you ever played somebody in mm-hmm. pool that really knows how to play? Like you won't even shoot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I play with rappers that play for a lot of money, and they're really good. <laughs> my homeboy, my homeboy, um, my homeboy Jeffrey, he's a fucking, he's really, really good at pool. Every time I play him, I never get, I don't even shoot. And then he'll sit there and say, yeah, I'm, I'm playing defense on you. And I'm like, what? I was like, defense? Yeah. There's just, it just goes, like, there's yeah. levels yeah. to these kind of things. You know what I'm saying? I've been around really good pool players that hurt your feelings, that <sighs> make you want to practice, and then you get, I got... I got decent. Yeah, I'm yeah. Not, I'm not gonna say good because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. good compared to a real pool player is like I was trash. You know, right, what I mean? right. I got right. decent for the I guess the common pool hall. The, yeah, for playing the, yeah, the backyard yeah. pool playing type of you know garage playing type of person. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. I ain't putting no money on it. I ain't playing nothing more than a ten dollar ball game, maybe. Right, Max. right, I mean, right. Yeah. That's most of my confidence. I'm not confident enough to go anything higher than that. Either. No, no. <laughs> Those guys playing like a hundred dollar ball yeah, games, yeah. you know. I, I've seen thousand. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure it gets way games. higher than that. And these, between two horrible pool players, they just have to prove an ego point. You know what I'm saying? Like, but isn't that like fun? That's like the fun thing about being rich, though, is just doing absurd things with money. Like, didn't like Lil Wayne and Birdman bet like 10k on like Madden 15, 2015 games? Just 10, ridiculously stupid shit. 10k, I, I, I say probably put add another zero to that if it's talking wow. Bird and Wayne. Damn. I used to be. Around You're probably right. Bird. Yeah. Oh really? You used to be around those guys? Yeah, yeah. No shit. I love cash money. Man. What, what was it, what was that like? Um, I met I met um. So by way of my homeboy, Ruben mm-hmm. goes by um, Cheese. This is um producer name. Okay. Yo, my bad, Ruben. I, I know Ruben by his real name, so like for I, sure, for sure, yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? I never call it Cheese, but that's his, his production name. His Hell production yeah! Name. Hell yeah! So I met I met him um by the way of my cousin. Mm-hmm. And I moved to Miami. Uh, to be honest, I, I moved to Miami to intern at Benzino Studio. It was called the Compound at the time. Shout so, out Benzino, man! Yeah, shout out Benzino, man! Shout out the dog. We call him Dog. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> bro, he's you know what I'm saying. Shout out to Coyla Ray too, because I watch her grow shout up. Shout out Coy, man! You know what I'm saying? Like, I just recently age. found out that she was that she's his daughter. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, I know they're getting a lot of um online. Yeah, I don't goofy get, shit yeah, happens. Whatever. They yeah, try whatever. to, yeah. they try to play her pops, and they try to play her against her pops, and all that goofy shit. But that's just I'm, the media being the media. But they still family at the end of the day, you know. I've been, I was there when I was there. Yeah, that's what I'm you saying. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I don't, I can't say I know her. Mm-hmm. I ain't gonna say I know dog, mm-hmm. but I was there. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. around long enough to right. know. You know what I'm saying? You know like, what time it is? Yeah, you know they're real. Family always love, man. And um, shout out to um, shout out to Ray too. Um, 
Zeno's first son. You know what I mean? Like that's shout who, like, cool Breeze Ray used to be his. <laughs> shout out his Cool Breeze Ray. I don't know if he still go by Cool Breeze Ray, bro. You know what I mean? But yeah, he was always cool too. Like I used to be over and fucking around with them in the studio. Um, but anyway, that's awesome. Um, just running around Miami, mm -hmm. um, I ended up meeting D Rock on the track um, through by the way of Ruben, and you know I was trying to get him to produce for me and shit, and we ended up we just running around together for a couple of years. You know what I mean? Through mm -hmm. the industry, and um, you know he's a uh, like the mainstay producer at, he's basically the new Manny Fresh of, of Cash Money, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay. With all due respect, I don't, you know. Right. You know, um, and, you know, he's been just doing his thing over there, so when I was around him on a daily, you know, of course, you know, he's in the studio every night at the Hit Factory. Mm hmm You know, Burr would pull up, uh, you know what I'm saying? Wayne would be in the studio, like, right over at the time, and, um, I just got to see them work, man. I got to see baby work. What was their work um, ethic like? Were they just like, just always in the studio, never stop recording? Just, machines, man. Yeah. Machines. I, I've heard that about Wayne, that he's just like, like his work ethic is well, just like unmatched. I didn't get to see Wayne. I, you know, I ain't going front. I never saw Wayne. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I had some, we had some common lady friends between, you know. Really? Us. Yeah, which is crazy. That but, is crazy, uh, yeah. Wow, right? And that then, is, yeah. So... And she she was around for like two or three like mixtapes, you know. Um, and she would tell me like she was just, we were just cool, you know. She would tell me like yo he's a, like she would like you know what I mean like I'm a, I don't want to blow up his spot. I'm not gonna say a name, but mm -hmm. she like Facetime me one time, and she was like yo don't say nothing. I'm gonna Facetime you. I just want you to I just want you to be inspired by this like. And he was just in the booth that's going tight. crazy. Yeah. Going crazy. And I was like, oh, that's incredible. She's like, there's no pen. There's no nothing. He's just going. That's he's what he's just that's going. That's what Cone Joe said. He said he would just like, he would like get in front of the speaker and like shadow box the mm -hmm. speaker basically. And then just go in there and just kill it. And, and like. That's amazing. I got, um, he had did this. Um, shout out to Lil Wayne, bro. Shout out to underrated, Wayne. Underrated, <laughs> underrated goat. He's going to play even under, Not even underrated. I, I, Wayne is. They don't bring his name up enough in GOAT category. Sad, he might so. be the most influential rapper of all he, time. 100%, dude. all time. And I, like, you know, I'm from Brooklyn. Hope is my man. Biggie's number one. You know, there's no there's no one and two to me when mm -hmm. it comes to Hove and Big. And, I'm, you know, some people might say that's blasphemy, but, mm -hmm. like, what, what Hove... I feel like you could equally uh, respect Yeah, what Hove's done is unprecedented. Yeah, 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 you know yeah, what I yeah, mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But same with Wheezy, all of them. There's no, like, comparison. Like, they're just... They're all on the same tear to me you know exact what I'm same mm -hmm. and like i just wanted like i used to watch um fade the black dvd over and over again mm -hmm. which is jay-z like jay-z's process is a little more um structured mm -hmm. in a sense like when, he, when he's bopping to the beat just from what we saw you know what i mean we don't know his daily 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 but mm -hmm. from what we he allowed us to see was that process was you know what i mean like catching a beat and catching a rhythm and and working it out mm -hmm. fully in his in his brain, like right, and then coming to the microphone. It's interesting Weezy, to watch. Weezy like, was different. It, it's interesting to watch how like a guy like Jay Z or like Lil Wayne just approaches writing a song. Mm -hmm. It's really fascinating mm -hmm. to see mm -hmm. somebody like that. You got two guys on the goat category, Mount Rushmore. So to watch them like how they do their process of like creating is always fascinating because it's different right, for everybody. Right. I mean, and I learned to marry both. Yeah, I got I got a little bit of you know of every I took a little bit of everybody's process because I I I wasn't a great writer. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, I believe I'm a more than I know I'm a great writer now. Right. I'm only going to get greater. You know what I mean? Facts. Um, and it's like, I remember the day it clicked. I remember the day I knew I could really? write. I could, I remember the day I knew I could go to the pros. How did you know that you were <clears throat> like professionally ready? Um, uh, or like, what was like a moment where you were like, yo, I'm, it's not I'm, the day I knew I was professionally ready. I always thought I was a pro from day one. I just, I, I like was that. always better than everyone around me. Even if I never I said it, I, I used to just that. listen to them and be like, that's lame. Mm -hmm. I was like, right. like, I just, you just knew deep down. You yeah. I rapped different. like, it's it's like, I rapped on a, like, you know what I'm saying? For sure. I was on my, my car ride to school freestyle with my girl in the car was incredible like she's she's like you're fabulous you know what i mean like yeah you're like, yeah, yeah she's like why don't you rap for real and i'm like nah like you know it was just corny right. to me i was like i'm trying to get money like you know what i mean like yeah 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 like music wasn't something until i got too good at it to mm -hmm. not like i thought it was like disrespectful to like have 
such a why gift. waste? Yeah, like you have this talent, like you're like doing yeah. yourself a disservice by not seeing it through right, type right. shit. So when did you, so you started getting involved with music at what like 15, 16, You were saying uh, you said you said you were recording no, way like, before that. Really, way before that. I went to the school of the arts and everything. No shit. Yeah, so you've right. been so you've been like your whole life you've been making yeah. music. Um, I'm I'm not born into a musical family, but I have musical influences in within the family, close friends. Really? Okay. Uh, yeah, my um. Um, so I grew up in Brooklyn. I grew up in East Flatbush. So shout out Brooklyn. Yeah, shout out to Brooklyn. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, right now we get down. Be Hell yeah! Life. Fuck yeah, bro. So we like um, my my babysitter's house, which is crazy. Which is like my mom's best friend's daughters. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. We yeah, just, yeah, yeah. She would walk us down the block, uh, and their block is directly in front of White Clef's dad's church i believe it was or something in that sense so right. i used to always hear the stories like oh i like the gene family be over here at this church they be over here at this church ah. mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying long behold like you know i don't know what he i guess he used to come there guest pastor sometime and stuff like that you know what i mean like they was That's from awesome. yeah. so like you hear that growing up right and then like of course i'm in love with hip-hop like i'm in love with hip-hop i'm like i was you're kind of in the you. You're kind of from the mecca. Yeah, I'm. I'm you're kind of stepping on the same streets that a lot of legends were stepping for sure, on. For sure, do you Biggie's think that, right up do the you, block. Do you think that that maybe plays a big dividend in like why you're as good as you are, and where you're at now? I, Has to a little bit. A lot of it. A lot of it. You know, because like, the bar was so high from where I'm from. Mm-hmm. Like you know, you're talking big. You're talking hove. You're not even talking like those are the, the top of the top. You you buster. You, you know, you're talking about like. Mm-hmm. So many artists from Brooklyn that that's it was like incredible. Shit you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. it's like yo. So all right, my bar, you clef. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. you got most deaf and these all these these are all you know Talib. Like you, you know what legends. I'm saying? You hearing that growing up, you think like I'm never gonna be that nice, whatever. Like so like I, you keep practicing. Like you know, I went to school of the arts like by accident because my sister, my little sister, had a lisp. She had a speech impediment mm-hmm. and. The only school I was in Catholic school at the time. Me and my oldest sister were in Catholic school. I went to Catholic school too. Uh, so I was Saint Teresa Lisieux. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know. I went to Saint Andrews Catholic High School. It was or middle school in um, Cape Coral. Catholic school is lit. I don't know what it. Catholic school is popping. I don't know what they talking about. Like, I mean, I had a great time. I did too. It was fun. You go on field trips. It's it's private. It's, it's private school, so everything's paid for. So you went. I got to. I, I reflect on it now, like, like. Okay, my parents paid a lot of money for us to go to Catholic school, right? Mm-hmm. It wasn't cheap. Mm-hmm. It was a good Catholic school outside of our, like, you know, neighborhood, 10, 15 blocks. So that's, mm-hmm. you know, we were in a good neighborhood. It's right on Troy Ave in Brooklyn, right? So at the time, I'm like, we go on like four or five field trips a year. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? As long mm-hmm. as your parents can afford it, like, mm-hmm. you're going on field trips, you're going we went to museums, we went to. You get to see so much. You get to be so much more educated. It's just a great average. school experience. Yeah, like yeah, people yeah. just care a little yeah. bit more. Like there's just a little bit more. Like a little more ne- mean with the nuns. I had real nuns. I don't know if you had nuns. No, no, that was that's old nuns. school. The nuns is old school. So we didn't have teachers that were nuns, but the administration were nuns. Yeah, but they were they were <laughs> the disciplinary people were nuns. It yeah, like. it was like <laughs> and they were like we had um, it was crazy. Like, were they old school with like discipline? Did they like slap your hands with rules? No, and no. Shit? So like right, like right when I was in like Catholic school, they got ruled out. Like the year before, literally. really? Yeah. So like, the, the the physical discipline got ruled yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They couldn't hit kids anymore. <laughs> yeah, I think someone sued in like ninety three yeah, or ninety four, sure. yeah. and then it was just over. From there. So, like, Some nun fucking caught a body. <laughs> yeah, facts. A real body. You know? <laughs> Somebody spun the block on her, and then that was over. It was done yeah, after that. Real. <laughs> That's hilarious. But no, like, yeah, just. I don't know, musical influences from everywhere and in school and I was just like acting at the same time because we did a lot of plays. Mm-hmm. So I had to do a lot of theater and theater you sing. Right. And it was just part of like, you can't not, not do the three turtle, turtle doves and like the, the Christmas play when you're in Catholic school. Like you, you, you're going to get in trouble. You know what I'm right, saying? Like, right, right, yeah, yeah. This is your part and this is you do it. Like I don't care if you're shy or not, you're going to figure it out. You're going to figure it out. And eventually you want to be in the front of the stage. Like, yo, he getting some shy. You know what I'm saying? You know, like, yeah. Like, and that's I was kind of liking it. That's tight. So you're from you're from Brooklyn, mm-hmm. where a lot of legends have first started out, right? Mm-hmm. And then you went to you went to the School of the Arts, mm-hmm. which 
didn't Pac go to like an art school too? Yeah, yeah. He went to he went to Juilliard. So that yeah, was, that's, so that's kind of you. Kinda I think have, Baltimore School of the Arts or some or Juilliard. You kind of have like a little J-Pick. ingredient of, out of like a diff, bunch of different yeah, winning yeah. formulas. And I'm a Gemini. That's tight as fuck, Which dude. Is Tupac and Biggie. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying like I'm, Tupac and Biggie were both Geminis. Yeah, really. Biggie's a Gemini. But Can Biggie. you look that up, Elijah? What um, the birthdays of Biggie and Tupac? May 21st and June 16th. That's interesting. That's interesting. It should be Biggie. Should be like May twenty first. Yeah. So you're you're really from like one of the fucking yeah. <laughs> founding birthplaces of hip hop. Twenty first. Yeah. That's amazing, bro. Yeah. And um, you know, Pac's from New York too. I don't know, like he is from New York. He get the he get. The, Didn't he live in Baltimore too a little bit too? Yeah. He got the West Coast. He got the West Coast like c- certification, but you know, he's in. That's a New York. He's legend. from the East. He's from the East Coast. That's a New York legend. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's that crazy. Became a, that became. Uh, uh, a West Coast icon. That's that's how that is. That that's is. What they, that's what his his damn Wikipedia today. A New York legend that became a West Coast icon. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, dude. And then in a, in, in a global a global phenomenon. There you go. You know what I'm saying? That's that's the that's his tagline. That's the only way to des- uh, describe pop. You know, I mean, I watched the notorious the notorious movie. You watched? The, did you ever watch the notorious yeah, movie? Yeah. How did you feel about it? I wish they would did it better. Yeah. I feel all like due respect to Mrs. Wallace. Right. Her, she told her story, so I, you know, but mm-hmm. the, I would have loved to seen the perspective of me, someone that was that was in the era. I wanted to see the reflection of what I actually saw, like a third party, yeah, perspective you know what I'm of what's, yeah. what what happened, right? Because it's, right. it's neutral and non biased, right, right, right. That makes right. sense. So, yeah, we saw a lot. We saw, we saw the big thing. We saw the pocket, which is crazy. So you said. I grew I grew up in Brooklyn, mm-hmm. um, but around like ninety four ninety five, um, Brooklyn was real hot. Like like, gang violence was like, just kicking up crazy. A lot right. of shootings, a lot of like police what brutality the, was going what on. Are the, a lot what, of crazy stuff. What are like the big pro- predominant gangs in Brooklyn? Like, I can't say. I mean, I've been I've been out the mix for a long time. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. In the Brooklyn streets, you know, I go back and visit, but I, I'm. It seems like it's very intermixed now. It's everything. Everything that you hear is everywhere else is also there. Because I was, you know what I'm I, I listen to a lot of like Bronx and Brooklyn drill rap. Yeah, yeah, I and like, yeah, I love that shit. It's hard as fuck. It's like workout music. But um, but I know that I know that K Flock, he's part of a group called DOA, and they have Crips and Bloods in the same gang. See, I which I've never I've never heard of that before. I don't know if I'm entirely accurate on that, but yeah, uh, so there is um. Alleged factions of of gangs that have intermixed. You know what I'm saying? That's interesting because like my whole life it was always like, nah, they don't fuck with each other at all. And then now there's like this weird new hybrid subculture of like a mix of it. People, people, all right. So like, when you in the street for real, like you know, like you got crip homies, you got blood homies, you got you mm-hmm. got this homie, you got all types of homies. Like right, like the the like I hate when they pretend like everybody's not cool in the streets. Like, beef be individual beefs. You know what I'm saying? Like, a right. lot of beefs start individually and may turn to, like, you and the homies and ah, ah, because it's just, you know, by by, right. f- by affiliation, you fall into something. You know what I'm saying? Right. But, like, I've been in the music business, I could say. I've been around the notable <laughs> such and suches, right? hmm And they're all cool. You know what I'm saying? Even right. the ones that pretend to beef on camera, mm-hmm. behind closed doors is still a respect. Of like, you know what I mean? It's still a, right. a level of respect and like it's kinda like how Schoolboy Q was like the only blue flag in T D E type shit. Like they don't give a fuck that he's a crip. It's just like we just fuck with you because we're all in this same shit together type shit. I'm gonna tell you what re- really stamped that for me, because I I tell you I was around Cash Money first. You know, Cash Money is what they affiliate with, what they say they affiliate with affiliate with, you know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. I was around that. And it was always cool. Like there was never no, there was never no smoke nowhere. You know what I mean? It was always love. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then I met uh, Compton Menace. I don't know who you know who Compton Menace. Mm-hmm. Is. That sounds familiar so though. He was in the. Uh, Can you pull that up? Compton Menace. NWA movie. Mm-hmm. Um, he's OG Two Tone, the one that runs up on the bus and um, checks Cuban him. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. He pulls the okay, bus okay, over. Okay, okay. So that's Compton Menace right there. Like, real good homie. You know what I mean? He really looked out for a couple of years. Like. You know, just in the sense of telling me about the game and being around him. Just being like an OG? Yeah, being a, I was around him, by the way, at D-Rock and stuff, just, you know, in the studio a lot. And we used to go by his crib, and 
just hearing his conversations, you know, not necessarily talking to me directly, but like mm -hmm. being being in the room, being a fly on the wall. Yeah. And bro, he was like, you know, this is a real, you know, fruit time Piru. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's mm -hmm. from Bompton. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. and I'm around someone from the club for real. From the curb for real. And mm -hmm. they they explain it like, bro, like I'm seeing the biggest crips at his house. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. chilling, smoking, everybody chopping up. They making music upstairs in the studio. And it's all about money. It's like, it's get all to the about money. money. What's the, what's the, what's all the drama for? If it ain't about right. no money, then, you know what I'm saying? That's Let interesting. it go. That's interesting. That's, I, that's, after I saw that, and that was years ago. That was had to be like 2016, 15. After I saw that, 14 maybe. You know what I mean? I was like, right. I never had that, that perception of what the, what the programming Mm -hmm. They try to program us. They to be program like, us, yeah. To be like, ah, oh, these be red and blue, and it's real, like all of them are cool, right? And now a few of them do beef. Don't get it twisted. Mm -hmm. But uh, the majority of them, but it's more like are personal. Cool. It's personal. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I mean, Whack One Hundred's a pyro, and his and he manages Blueface, who's a schoolyard critic. Right, right. I've, okay, so Whack is a whole different. Another. I never met Whack. I don't know Whack. I've You're a wild boy, dude. <laughs> But I will say one thing. He is entertaining. I was going, like, you took the words out of my mouth. He's like, fucking pause. entertaining you know as fuck. Like, he's, <laughs> he's, 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 you know what it is? I, you, know what I, you know what I like about Wack? Hella he's an against the grain kind of thinker. He knows how to get the conversation going. He does. He, know, he knows I'll what he's doing. That. Yes. Him I, and 6 ix 9 match made in heaven. What? Dude, I fucking watched that whole interview. I'm like, this is gold, man. Fucking gold. They're, they're, Both of them. Cool. There was two of them, right? They did one in Miami, Fresh and Fit Studio, and then they did one at Academic mm -hmm. Studio, I think, in L.A. Was it in L.A., I think? I don't know which one it was. They they all... It just To me, this is wrestling right now. Like It's, re it's, it's like, theatrics. Some it's, people are taking it way too They take serious. it too serious. You know exactly. what I'm saying? Like, bro, that, shit that's, is wrestling, bro. That's funny this that you say that, because I, I see that all the time, and I'm like, I know this dude is just being theatrical right now. Yeah. Like, I know he's sprinkling a little bit of truth of like, yeah. what he's saying, but he's also being hyperbolic, and he's trying to get a reaction because he understands the internet. Some of them, though, are doing it with real-life events, and that's where it gets weird dangerous dicey and yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 because they're like you can't be on clubhouse and all these things talking about real street shit real street shit and with real names and real people and real locations and like there's no there's not like there's not a real rico outside you know what i mean right you mm. gonna you gonna catch a real case yes you fucking are you know what i'm saying by accident mm -hmm. just you know what i'm saying like so you gotta just omit certain things like just out of just safety for your, you know what I mean, right. of the statute of limitations. You know what I'm saying? You Absolutely. Just omit some things like, and they, I hate that it's becoming the cachets to say the most real thing that happened in the street and bring it to the incriminating internet. yourself and bring it to the internet just to for clout. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. You know, like, I feel like that's like a, it's like a, tra it's I, to me personally, I feel like that's a trap. It's a trap. Yeah, it is. It's you gonna trick yourself off the streets. You know what I mean? Like you are gonna get some money. But like all good, all money ain't good money. I will tell you that. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna drop a bomb of that. Not all money is good money. Oh, sir. That's wisdom right there, man. You learn that in the game over time. Like all money ain't good money, man. What are what are you've been in the game for a long time? Mm -hmm. What are some like real life lessons that like you learned from just the experiences that you've had? Um, Obviously, besides what we just talked about. The game taught me patience for real. That's a good one. The game taught me real patience. Like, cause like I didn't have the quick overnight success in no, by no means. Right. I had to really, I had nobody. I came in this thing. I came in this thing out of, you know, my freshman year in college by, by accident. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. wanting to be in it my whole life. Mm-hmm. But I was on a whole different path in life. I was just like, you know what I mean? Like, I was, I, to be honest, I was going to law school. You know, my... Really? Yeah, I was getting... I was going to college to then go to go, then go to law school. That's what the idea was. Like, all right. But I just want to be an entertainment lawyer. I just know what I wanted. I've, I've been... I've wanted to be in entertainment my whole damn life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was just like... Like, you know what I mean? Like, I got Haitian parents. You know what I'm saying? So, like... Shout out to Haiti, man. You know... My best friend's Haitian. Also, my parents, you know, um, um, we also have Dominican, Cuban, and Polish in us, which is... Polish? Yeah, my... my <laughs> Holy shit, dude. My great-grandma is Polish-Cuban. She she married a Haitian-Dominican man, had 
my grandma, which then married a Haitian man, which had my dad. Wow, dude. You know what I'm saying? That's, so, ama- that's amazing. It's like, so, um, and I learned all this when I went to Canada in like 2017. They're like, I was like, who's this white lady on the wall? They're like, that's your grandma. I was like, what? <laughs> Uh, like, that's awesome. You know, that's white Haitian. So I'm thinking like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking she's a white Haitian. You know, just like mm-hmm. you know, which is an albino. Wait, they're a white. Oh, okay, albino. Okay, they're, I see they're, what you're saying. Okay, okay, okay. No, there's also white Haitians. Like, like that look like me. That are from Haiti. Yes, yes. Can you yes. please Google, more? Can you please Google that? More Haitian than I will ever be. You know what I'm saying? Like, speak <laughs> fluent, fluent Creole. Everything. Yo, better than me. <laughs> oh, everything. Like, I understand. No so, fucking you know, way. There's plenty. Like, if you some of the biggest Haitian artists look um, are pretty much white Haitian. Yo, low key, I've been trying to learn how to speak Creole just so I can <laughs> eavesdrop yeah. on my homeboy. When he has conversations got, on the you got, phone. You got light skinned Haitians. I'm saying like white Haitians, blonde hair, blue eyed Haitians. You know, like wow. You know, like you probably not gonna find too many on the internet. When you, like when you run around like, Haiti, but they're like second, they're not first generation Haitian, they're second, third generation. Right, right, like right. Like their parents moved to Haiti for whatever reason, mm-hmm. and then they were born there from, the, and they from the soil for real. You know, they right. They it's like authentic. South. It's like South Africans. Yeah, pretty like, much. Like South Africans are like lighter yeah. skin, but they're mm-hmm. they're still Africans. You know. Yeah, straight up, straight up. Actually, I just met some. Um, I was at this little barbecue thing, um, for Memorial Day, and um, I met. Some really cool South African people, actually. Dude, they have such a cool accent. They were dope. They were very dope. They have people. their cool. They have their own little lingo over there. Yeah. Like he the- was very, um, he was very cultured. Like you know, like I asked him because like my mom lived in Africa for two years. Um, really? Yeah, my mom was very cultured. Like she went, on, she traveled. She lived in Paris. She lived in France, and she lived in Africa before Holy she even shit. came to America. Oh, she's got yeah, that's fire. Yeah, so she was like, um, and not necessarily out of like luxury. It was out of necessity to get to America in, in her day. Dude, but aren't she, our, she got a, aren't our parents amazing as fuck, dude? Yeah, yeah. Just the crazy. shit that they went through to get crazy. to where they're at now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. I give a lot of credit to my parents. Just the shit that they had to deal with. Just I do to too. Get. Yeah, it's amazing. I do dude. too. Like for sure. You know, you always have you you bump heads because they. We're in different eras. They don't understand a lot of things that we right. do. And we don't understand a lot of things that they're saying, you know what I'm saying, until mm-hmm. we get old enough to mm-hmm. parallel parallel it. You know what I mean? Whatever. Dude, the older I get, the better the relationship with my dad gets. Just because I fucking understand what he's saying now. Because I lived it. Now, right, I, get, right. now I get it. You know, I touched the stove. I burned yeah, my yeah, hand. Yeah. Now I understand what you're saying. It's, it's, it's um, I don't know. I have a, I have a back and forth relationship with with my dad, which is that my parents have been married my whole life. You're you know still married? Saying? Yeah. But dude, they, shout out to that. Some well, of my parents. I, if you, if you call it that, you know what I'm saying? Like, they live in the same house together still. I say that. They love each you know, other, like, man. Whatever. Yeah, like, it's just, in, our, in Haitian culture, it's not common to see divorce. Even if they, two parents hate each other's guts, they'll just sleep in different rooms. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They're still going to raise their kids, you know what I mean? Like, really? Interesting. You know, so that's, it's still, they're going to become, um, and that's, which is not always good. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. that uh, animosity. Yeah, it's not always I, I'm sure that can probably healthy. brew into like yeah, it gets toxic not, over time. It's very you toxic. Know? It's very but toxic. you know what though? I do respect the fact that they're willing to at least try to make it work. They're being cordial. They're not throwing away just because they're trying to fix it. I, I want to say that some some are just being cordial uh, for, the for the sake of the, of the family type shit. Of you know everything, it's finances, family, like what you right, doing? you know, right, you start right, over. Right. You know, like, yeah, yeah, but this house true. together, you built it. Ah, you know, fuck it. It's four bedrooms. I'm going that side. You going that side. Leave me alone. That's true. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But whatever. Just cordial. You know, like, I see that with a lot of parents growing up. But, right. You know, like, like I said, it's not always healthy, though. That shit can be toxic. It well. could definitely be toxic. Yeah, like, that's a good point. Yeah. You, know, you want, you want, you want yeah, some more yeah, liquor? Yeah. yeah. Some ice. Can and you ice. get him some ice and some liquor? Don't worry, Elijah. You're, you're, I'm clocking your hours. Don't worry. <laughs> but no, um. What was I saying about like, just I want I wanted to emphasize on like the like, this like behind the game shit like mm-hmm. yeah please this music shit, like I, like a lot of people don't know my story right so I've never told it to be honest like mm-hmm. um, in full and like heartache and pain like the record I just put out like, mm-hmm. which is fire by the way available on all platforms thank you thank please you. go stream it. it yes please, please. stream that yep I'm gonna get well, run that video that. up man like. Run that video the fuck up, I'm, please. I'm like, it's I'm on my Instagram outside, story. Bro. I've been on hiatus, like, bro. I'm so, I'm so thankful, like, cause so, like, we just came out of a pandemic, like, mm-hmm. and I'm just thankful for life because my, I just had my birthday past Wednesdays. Happy belated birthday as well, sir. Thank you, thank you. And I'm like, yo, 
I really, I really, I really ducked the Reaper twice. For real, for real. And really? Like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, Elaborate on that a little bit. So, I got hit by a car. Like, no way. 2011. Yeah. 2011. Holy shit. I got hit by a car. Um, I was jogging, so I've had this crazy up and down thing with weight. If anybody's ever followed my socials, mm-hmm. or when you do when you, like, I start to show, like, the old stuff that we kind of took down, mm-hmm. like, so... My whole life, I was a big kid, you know what I'm saying, until um, my sophomore year of high school. And I was like, yo, I need to get some bitches, you know what I'm saying? Like, For real, son. It's, it's like, I'm, you know what I'm saying? I was always, I, I was always a fly, yeah. fat dude because I learned from big, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, I was always getting money. I was always fly. I always had a job. Always Hell, kept, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I always had some type of You're a smooth-talking guy, bro. You're Thank very you. smooth-talking. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I had charm on my and side. you're very intelligent, too. Thank so you. I, I, see, I, I, I see you, bro. I, I did... But it wasn't enough. Like I'm getting to like one, maybe two. You can't be Jack, cause then it won't be fair. Yeah, it's well, so <laughs> I was getting to like one or two of them. I was like, yo, like my boys is having like six and seven girlfriends and shit. I got like one maybe and like yeah, one yeah. and a half a maybe. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. But she like this other dude too, type of thing. I was like, yo, this is whack. I was like, what is going on? <laughs> yeah. And my homeboy's like, bro, you a fly dude, but you know what I'm saying? You gotta slim it down a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Around the same the real, time, yeah, I was yeah. watching um. Making the band, I love Diddy. Bro, Yo, making the band, bro. One of the most influential people ever in in. You talking about Diddy? Yeah, my, I fucking my love Pete. He's bro. so cool, bro. As much as I love Biggie, I love Puff, bro. Yo, like, shout out to the band. I'm a that bit was of the both ba- of them. that was dude. They need to bring that back. The rap, yeah, he does. the rap reality. And let shows. me host it. Let me. I got it, Puff. Trust me, I got it. Let That's me how I feel it. about the white rapper show. Bring me through. You know. Trust me, like <laughs> I, I do this, Puff. Anyways, I didn't mean to get you off track, but no, no, but yo. Shout out, Puff. Shout out, P. Diddy, man. Yeah. Or whatever he calls himself these days. Listen, <laughs> love. That's what we call him. Yeah. Sir Love. Shout out, Diddy, man. Saying? Yeah, hell yeah. That's, that's, that's the man, bro. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, Puff, I remember, you know, like, one of the funniest moments. People, like, think he was, Puff was being rude, but he said something surreal when he was doing Day 26 and making the man. He was like, yo, there's no red meat in the industry. And it was very harsh at the time, but he was just telling him, like, yo, like, like, people... What he said without saying it is we're very um, um, shallow, you know, in the sense of Hollywood and entertainment and just like, right, you know, like, that's why I love like the Lizzo's and all these people that broke the boundaries and the Gaga's and right, the, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the not so perfect looking that mm. broke the boundaries. Not to say like anybody else is perfect either, but I know what you're saying, the, though. Whatever that thing is, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. the Hollywood chases that look. Like, I'm glad that everyone that's broke that mold, like, shout out to you. You know what I'm saying? For real. So, like, and Puff was trying to tell him at the same time, like, there's no red meat, but be you. You know what I'm saying? You don't got to be no six-pack, skinny, ah, uh, but you got to be healthy. Right. You, gotta, you know what I'm saying? You got to mm-hmm. have some motion. You know what I'm saying? Get out there and run. Make your heart right and keep your cholesterol down. You know Absolutely. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. You got, you want to, you're going to get this money. You want to you wanna live it. Right. You want to live it out, right? Yeah. You, know you want to live a long life and enjoy as yeah. much success as possible. Take care of your body. That's how my homie kind of like, he kind of pressed it like, yo, you got to, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you want, you want girls, you want the finer things in life. You want the finer girls, you got to be a finer man. So I, went, I, I sought out to be a finer man, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? And that mm-hmm. was like, you know, getting my health in order and all these things. And, and it rocked out for years. I was happy in my vlog. And, but then you eventually, so it becomes a job. Like, I'm in the gym three, four hours a day. I started bodybuilding. It is a lot. I stupid swole. You know what I mean? Like, my boy was a um, um, was a American Top Team at the time. Shout out American Top Team, man. Yeah. Uh, Cauliflower Ear Gang, baby. Yeah, he's a We trainer. out here. He trained under <laughs> Dean Thomas and all them. So oh, all those guys yeah, man. used to, um, the you know, Dean's gym used to be in Port St. Lucie. Mm-hmm. And you know, I used to go hang out and just vibe with them, and you know, every now and then they, you know, like let me pretend I know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I catch a few upside the head and realize, like, nah, I ain't built for this. You, you know, know what I'm saying? You know what I think about fitness is like I, tr- I, I encourage all my friends to just get involved in fitness in some way. But yeah. you, you don't have to be a bodybuilder. No, 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 no. I just, took it too extreme. You know what I'm it is? I'm an extreme type of person. I am an extreme type of person. Like when I get involved in something, I like I obsess over it. I'm the same way. But I think with um with physical exercise, I think for men personally, I think it's good for us like mental health wise Word. because everything now, like we're so overstimulated by like our phone. Like if you think about it, like our brain is so stimulated all day mm-hmm. long. Like you're just constantly being shot thoughts, pictures, whatever. 
your body isn't matching that same stimulus. No, no, no. You're so right. that can cause anxiety and stress, okay. and it can make a man feel worthless. So what I think is, since we have so much instant gratification now, I think that men are lacking that battle and that war to, like, earn shit. Because, I mean, if you think about it, like, this device in my pocket can get pizza, pussy, yeah, yeah. videos, movies. There's no, There's no, like, fighting to earn anything now. So, like, men are just becoming so complacent with just, like, having things be so readily available that there's no war. And I think as men, over time, like, our ancient ancestors, like, your ancient ancestors mm -hmm. and mine, mm -hmm. they were like, yo, we're going to go kill everything over there. Yeah, that's just what they gotta, did. You got um, what my boy like to say? He's, uh, earn, uh, earn, earn your, your stripe. Yeah. That's what's, uh, earn your leisure, too? Yeah, earn your fucking leisure. Yeah, yeah. You know nowadays, we- Shout people, out to earn your leisure. Shout out to earn your leisure. We'll give them the hordes for that. <laughs> Nowadays, common men don't earn their leisure anymore. Right. Everything is instant. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and the fact that we don't fulfill that, like, war of, mm -hmm. like, fighting for something, mm -hmm. it leaves, it leaves like, an empty part in, like, a man, which causes depression and anxiety. Like, yeah. do you know what I'm saying? I mean, I've been through, I, like, was, what I was getting to, when I got hit by the car, I went through depression post. But, mm -hmm. so, like, I was, one day I got up, I went jogging. I used to like jogging at night because I could, I could breeze through it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I didn't, like, get burnt by the sun. It's hot as shit in Florida. So, you know what I'm saying? So I used to love running like right when the sun went down and catch a little bit of humidity so you can you can get a little sweat get going, your sweat going and then burn you burn to death. You catch a cool Perfect. breeze on the way back. I used to I used to run a five K every night. That's a that's impressive. That's like what, three miles? Three and a half miles? Three point one. Three point one. That's solid. Every night. Like on the regular. And the nights you feel nice you go for four, five, six miles, you know what I mean? Like my Nike run app used to be ringing. Yo, real going shit. crazy. Did, did you smoke weed before you ran? No, I didn't. Really? Then. I didn't then. You, I do now. It's the best. I do now. I couldn't then. I can't even run without being. Without I just smoking. smoke when I got back though. Without back is the best. It's I the got best. back because you got that runner's high and your lungs bro, are wide open. All right, all right. I don't know. <laughs> I don't care who you are, bro. If you, it takes a long. I ran for years before I caught a real runner's high. Mm -hmm. I became a real runner. Then I caught a runner's high. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I started running like six miles every night for like a year. I got mad skinny. I was like 154 pounds. Wow. Parents thought I was on crack or something like that. I was, <laughs> they thought I was bugging. You're just like, nah, it I'm was like, to running. Because they used to me being 290 pounds. Yeah, bigger, yeah. And then I dropped down to like 160 in like eight months, nine months, and I just fell in love with running. Mm -hmm. That's why I started lifting because my parents started thinking I was like doing, like, like I smoke weed, right? So mm -hmm. for a Haitian parent, they call everything crack. All right, so they're like, yo, you smoking the crack. You're like, you smoking the crack. And you're, 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 <laughs> That's you're skinny. And I'm like, yo, I'm, yeah. I'm in the gym. I eat better. Like, you said, I'm yeah, eating the yeah, rice. Yeah, yeah. My mom's like, you're not eating my food. I was like, yeah, I guess it's <laughs> like, yo, this 1,400 calories a spoon. You know what it's I'm saying? Lot, like, it's a lot of calories, man. Like, yo, I got I to gotta yeah. change my lifestyle. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. and so, like, I used to always laugh about it because he's like, you smoking crack my life. But I was just running a lot. Yeah. And, you catch that one day I caught a I caught a runner's high. It's the best. I I thought I floated into the sky, bro. I was like, <laughs> I thought I was jogging into heaven. Bro. It's different. Like, it's I completely said, oh, different. Shit. Dude, the runner's high thing is real, bro. I remember the first time I ever got runner's high. Ironically, mm -hmm. I smoked. I smoked a I smoked a joint before I went to the gym. This little gym in this neighborhood. Word. Took a little bit of pre workout. Had the had the perfect upper but cool mix. I ran ten. I ran until the treadmill shut off. Which I didn't even know was possible. I didn't know that was possible. Two and a half hours is the limit. In case anybody knows. Two and a half hours is the limit. So I ran on a treadmill for two and a half hours That's straight. Excessive. I was just, I was in a, I was in like a meditative trance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been there. I've been there. I've been there. Like I was, I was thinking, I've been there. well, I was going through a breakup at the time. So Ooh. whenever, yeah, whenever I go through a breakup, I just drown myself in like product, like productivity. Now you and, got Jim Hart music for that. You know what I'm saying? Now I got it. No, fuck <laughs> <laughs> a lot of no but music. like <laughs> but real shit though like when i was going through the breakup i was on the treadmill every fucking day and then one day i was just like i want to see how long mm -hmm. i can run until i just can't anymore it was like 11 miles but like that shit shut That's off crazy. at two and a half out two and a half hours my my phone died halfway through i ran out of water i was literally just going off of pure balls yeah. balls just like i was mad i was pissed the amount of people that came and did their workout in the midst of that run, mm -hmm. crazy. But oh. I was stoned as fuck, and I was just completely, like, it's crazy, because, like, people think that, like, smoking weed, like, they, like, they group it in with, like, people that are, like, lazy and lethargic. Dude, that was one of the most productive days I've ever had in my life. But, like, after that 10 miles, I felt so, it was bliss. Elated. After my leg cramps mm -hmm. were done. Went away. <laughs> oh, I was in the best mood ever. Like, nothing bothered me, because, like, I feel like I got all of that anxious energy out of my body. And then after that, I was cool as fuck. It was chill. 
I I learned so as a body like when I was bodybuilding and running, mm-hmm. two different things, right? But I I learned what makes me. I used to ask a lot, so I was cool with a lot of um, kids that ran cross country. Let me not leave that out. That's how I learned to run. You have to learn how to run. So like a lot of people can't run because they don't know they, they've Elab- never been taught. Elaborate on elaborate on that. You have to learn how to run, like so, like how to breathe properly, how to like not to pump your hands faster than your legs, cadence, rhythm in your steps. Interesting. Like, you have to learn how to run. To learn how to, you can't be a a distance runner without learning how to run in in distance format. I'm gonna drop a bomb to that because that's interesting. <laughs> Learning yeah. how to run. Yeah, you got to learn. It how is to run. a rhythm, isn't it? Yes, yeah, it's, it's like, and especially if you're running with a partner, like you know, you you're you're more tired if you're not running to the same beat. Right. If you're like in sync, it's yes, like it's, yes, you can go longer. You right. Know what I mean? like, right. Right. So that they, they always ran. My homies always ran cross country, and I used to, you know, like used to be like, how do you like? I was a fat boy then, but I used to like pick. I'm always picking people's brains like about their 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 skills. Right. You know what right. I mean? I'm like yo, so like my homeboy was dumb skinny. And he used to run like twenty six miles, do marathons all the time. That's crazy. All the all the time, try at the lines. Like, and he's like, he was like sixteen. I'm like, bro, how do you run? He would tell me to drop on like Fort Pierce, is roughly like thirteen miles away from Port St. Lucie. Fourteen miles, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. He would tell me to drive him to the tip of Fort Pierce, and he would run back, and he would see me at the house in a few hours. That's amazing. You know what I'm saying, like. And he just be jogging. This is before I even ever ran in my life. So I used to be like, this guy is out of this. And, a, and he, he said a couple of hours. Yeah. So like, he was he was trotting. Yeah. Man. He would do he wow. would, he was crazy. He would run like thirty miles. No problem. He Dude, would train like being 10 able miles being over. able to run that pace for like five, six miles straight, I don't think people really understand mm-hmm. what that takes to mm-hmm. be able to do that. He was, he was like he was sick, bro. He was it was like he was sick. And I used to ask him, but he had a lot of knee problems and stuff, like real young from, oh, from really? doing that. Like Cause it's not healthy. You're not supposed to. Like he was just obsessive about running. Plus, he's probably running on pavement too, he which was, is definitely not good for your knees. He was, and, you know, running in the street and stuff like. But they loved it. All right, some people think. All right, like ASAX, like the bodybuilders too. Like some people think of donuts while they're running. Some people think of this. Some people think of sex. Some people think uh, of that. Oh, okay, okay. So okay. like you have to find something that keeps tricking your brain to thinking you just started it running oh, again to keep you in that like flight or flight response yes oh. in which pushes your body to go excessive amounts that's the only way you can run 30 miles without you your brain telling you to my stop. motive my motivation is like defending people i love oh man you hit it right on the money you know what i mean like i have to be right i have to be money. in like warrior shape to defend my homestead you're okay i you know simulate I mean? all my all my workouts are just to survive better i don't give a fuck about being jacked jack being jacked is just a byproduct of of being able to fuck somebody right, up if right, I need to. Right. Okay. Like I lift weights religiously, right. but I also shadow box yeah. religiously as well. Okay. So Me I'm too. I'm strong, mm-hmm. but I can also piece you up right. real bad. Same, same, yeah. same, same. So I don't give a like my thing is I don't ever want to be a buff dude that can't fight. Fuck that. You can have you could be a buff dude all you want, but if you can't throw hands and you can't defend yourself, what's the fucking point of being a jack dude? It's Pointless. 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 You're just more to hit. I know. I know. I know some guys. <laughs> That's hilarious. That, that make pizzas. That train six nights a week. I mean, six nights a six nights a week at 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 ATT. That a fucking flip your life. Fuck you up. Flip your life, boy. Put you upside down, dude. And he's nothing but a buck forty. You okay. know what I'm saying? Like yeah, people yeah. like, listen, I'm out here. I'm, I've been outside. You mm-hmm, know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. I know a lot of people have been around a lot of places out of the field of Ruiz, but also from Port St. Lucie. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like so, I got to, I got to see some cool shit. You know what I mean? Like being yeah. around some cool people that do some cool things. You know what I mean? Like for sure. And I, I that's how I coordinate my life. Like mm-hmm. if it ain't cool, I ain't fucking with. I could tell by the way you talk, bro. You know like, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. And people think I like I like I. This is me. I talk like this all the time. I have a real low tone and it's very raspy. If you catch me at night, it's going to be super raspy. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. I can go mute. Like, I'm like, yeah. my voice gets so raspy. It's just like, yeah, yeah, what I like. People see me like, 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 you know, Jada Kiss. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jada like, Kiss is That's why I stopped raspy. smoking blunts. I stopped smoking really? blunts like four or five years ago because of that. Like, I started signing. I've been smoking like, blunts heavy lately. You think I should fucking I smoke gravity. taper off them? Fucking go grab a leaf. The final gravel. boss of blunts. It is. It is the it's final. A, it's the final boss. It is, it is, he's when he's bison. He's yeah. like, like fucking. 
I'm just going to fuck your throat up I gave so up, crazy. I gave up all of tobacco and was just smoking straight fucking raw papers and shit. Solid, organic hemp papers forever. Mm-hmm. And then... This fucking crap relief. I just fucking love. I don't know. I don't give a fuck, bro. Tobacco is fire. I fuck with tobacco. It's fuck it. I I, I hate. I don't want to sit here and say I support lung cancer. And I don't, uh, obviously, listen, I don't. Okay. Look, I, I, I gotta say that. Like, but but like, let's. I are take, we gonna I, sit here and act like nicotine and tobacco isn't fire? I fuck with it. It is knowing knowingly knowing the risk. You know what I'm saying? It like, is. not yeah. like back in the day when they was out here goofing people up, telling you like nicotine and tobacco didn't kill you. Yeah, uh, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So, like, I used to work for a law firm, so I just, I, I always gotta, <laughs> yeah, yeah, respectfully understand, like, they was out here tricking people back in the day. Oh, I didn't know, of like, course they were. all them tobacco lawsuits were like, so I can't, I don't think I can say the law firm I worked for. Um, yeah, if you don't feel comfortable saying it, don't. Say I don't, it. I don't know if I can. None of, none of my homies still work. An for unspoken me. law firm that he used to work for. Yeah, yeah, they, they'll, they'll, they'll find it if they really know how to find shit. But, um. I'll edit it out. Don't worry about it. No, no, I, I don't care. Okay, okay, okay. My homie doesn't work for them no more. He, oh, okay, cool. He, okay. Yeah, yeah, go he got his own firm now. He he moved on up. Uh, shout out to my boy Heller. Good for him. He got his Josh own firm. Heller. No, it's not his firm, but he's partner now in yeah, a in a firm. Good for him, bro. Good for him, man. That's um, a level up. Yo, shout out to Josh Heller. He's best PI attorney in Florida. I'll add him. Hell yeah. Um. So yeah, my homie. You know, I was like, I had went broke at one point, like trying to like chase this dream. And I end up by accident working at his firm, like as like a secretary. Like I really? came on on some funny shit. So I used to like go on like Indeed and just like apply for like dumb jobs that I. Oh me, yeah, me too. I couldn't get just for no reason. Like, oh yeah, I'm broke, bro. I got <laughs> something. I got to do something. I'm not going back to the blog. I'm not going back to the street. And I'm like, but I got to be ducked off. Nobody can see me. Like right. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. shout out to anybody chasing the dream that got to go. Like that feels like it's embarrassing to digress. But sometimes you need it's to digress to, to fly. You know you what I'm do. saying? Yeah. Like you need to learn certain lessons. I respect. You know what? I respect people that can be honest with themselves. Yeah. A lot of art. Mean. A lot of people hide that. The fact, like, yeah, I played the block too. I, I did everything you. There's a whole line. I did everything you want to do. I did all that by the age of 22. By 21, I had the brand new act. Cool. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I lived that life. Yeah. By 23, I was richer than all my friends' parents. That's fucking fire, dude. You know what I'm saying? And there were a couple of moments where you probably it, had to take a step back in order was, to take two steps forward, right? Nothing ill-gotten lasts forever. You know? That's all I got to take. Yeah. Nothing ill-gotten lasts forever. And because it was That's ill-gotten, fine. I couldn't maintain it. I couldn't keep it. From For some reason, something always happened. There was always a financial emergency where you right. had to keep dipping back into the stash and dipping back into the stash and dipping back into the stash. That's and then then you don't want to do the same things you did to create the stash you cuz it's too risky now like right the and the risk to reward no longer matches and it's not yeah it doesn't you know it, it doesn't make it's it worth like, it it's not worth it anymore it's, it's like in in those like in those times you're like fuck like and i know a lot of i just want to say that for a lot of artists a lot of you know what i mean younger acts like trying to get on mm-hmm. and like you're going Sometimes you just got to be broke. That's good. That's what. That's real as like, fuck, dude. That's where your realest records gonna come from. That's where your your. your that's where you're gonna learn. You're gonna grow as a human being. Like you're gonna learn how to survive in different arenas. You know what I'm saying? Like if you always got it, you never. I follow this guy named Andrew Tate. I don't know if you know who he is. He's four time kickboxing world champion. He said that the his favorite thing about being rich was just remembering the times that he was broke. Yeah. Yeah, and how, yeah, you know what I mean. I, I say I was hood rich twice. Already. He said he said <laughs> that uh, he misses being broke because it just made him more. He was more sharp. He was more like um, he appreciated certain moments more. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's dope. That's yeah, dope. Yeah, you know, just the fact that he has a hundred million dollars and can still have that <laughs> mindset is amazing. You know what it is? Is it's a um, oh this dude that's yeah. this dude and just hey. He's going super viral. I, you don't know. Right oh, listen. I swear be, yo, to God, all right, I got all, right, all right, so I got some. So before you, all right, I fuck with him. He's fire. I fuck with him. Look, he be speaking fast. You know where I think he just stepped up? Right where my man, um, bro, he Kevin blew, Samuels. Kevin Samuels died. Rest in peace to Kevin Samuels, the fucking goat. Yo, yo. Okay, so they're in the same. They're in like the same sphere, right? Okay. What I love about Andrew Tate is he is the ultimate definition of pure out of the matrix freedom. He's got six passports, eleven driver's licenses, all different names, Word. completely legal. 
what 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 he said what he said this, was this dad's James Bond. He's the last dude that's fucking I I literally have talked to this dude on Instagram before. We've gone yeah. back and forth. Real okay, shit. Okay. Cuz right. I messaged him one day cuz I wanted him to be on my show. Yeah. Whiskey Wonders. So I, I messaged him like this heartfelt ass message about just like my whole shit or whatever. Right, right. Didn't expect him to respond. He responded. We talked for like 30 minutes. That's that's Sick respect. Shout respect. Out to, shout out to, shout out to Kobe Tate. <laughs> but the fact that he, what I like about him is like, yes, he has all these supercars. Yes, he has all these mansions. Yes, he, he chills with the baddest bitches ever, right? But the fact that he understands that like, in order to really free yourself from the matrix, you have to get to a level of wealth where like, no government can really hold you down at right, all. Right. And that, that, that kind of like switched my perspective on like what wealth, wealth and freedom really is. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, we all really are bound by laws and, and governments that are all different in every country. But the fact that he can hop on a private jet and go from L.A. to Dubai, Dubai to Australia, Australia to London, that's whenever freedom. he wants, that's with that's real freedom, dude. You know I, what I mean? I aspire to be that free. That 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 kind of money, like don't get me wrong, like the car that he has, like, uh, the Ferrari, no, McLaren, not. Ferrari, right? It's a beautiful car, but they're always going to keep making a better model, right? But the fact that he can move throughout the world at leisure is fucking sick. And that's the ultimate freedom I feel like it is and it's not a small like by no means is that a, that's a small thing to do it's mm -hmm. like the, they call it the 1% for a reason right you know what I'm saying like it's a 1% everything it's a 1% mentality a 1% 1% drive it's a 1% like you Absolutely. know what I mean like to like like a lot of a lot of not us cause we're in you know what I mean we're in the same realm mm -hmm. like but a lot of people discount what these people do like, oh, like, nah, he was born in the wealth. He didn't say, like, I'm like, the hardest thing to do is keep money. Mm -hmm. Not make money. I've made, That's what Boozy I've said. made Boozy. hundreds of thousands of dollars. Bro, Boozy said the same a thing. a million or two in my life. Lil Boozy said it's easy to get money. It's, e it's hard, hard to keep, keep it. Money, boy. Keeping it. I've been trying to keep money my whole life. Me I don't too. know how to do it yet. <laughs> I don't know how to keep it either, man. I, I need like, to make more of it. <laughs> I swear, yeah, I, that's the problem. I, I figure, yeah. I figure. I ain't making enough of it yet. That's why I can't. That's really it. what it is. That's all. You That's know all. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I'm spending it before I can make it, then I ain't making enough yet. But what I love what I love about Andrew was the fact that his father was actually um he was a chess grandmaster. He mm. was like a genius. Like the type of genius that can't function in society. That makes sense. And this dude used to fight for real? He, he's a he's a four time kickboxing world champion. K I think K one. Yeah. He's dude, he's na he's nasty with it, bro. He's nice. But what I what I like about him the most is just his mentality on life, for one. And just the fact that he Oh, he looks so different without hair, bro. Well, he looks so true. different without hair. But but like I said, like he uh he's just uh he just keeps it real about like how the system is rigged right, and like right, how right. like in order to escape the matrix, you have to get wealthy. And he's like his yeah. his his saying is it's gonna be have nots and have yachts. And I'm, I like and I was shit. like, I want to, I want to be have yachts. I'm a, I'm a have a yacht of person, you know. And like, what I also what I like about him too, is he says some real shit. He goes, he goes, life, you can't be happy all the time. Can't no. Nah. He goes anger and like those nah. things. Th that's what makes you and makes you want to change. You know what I'm saying? Like he was like, yo, being happy all the time is an unrealistic, unrealistic expectation. It, 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 it's stupid. It's, one, it's stupid as fuck. Can't not, be happy all the time. All right. My best days, my best days, you realize where you're, was the day after your worst days. Darkest before the dawn, dude. Yeah, it's like, it's. It's cliche, but it's so fucking it's, true. The silver line and all that, you know what I mean? All those, those, those dumb sayings you don't want to ever listen to when you're younger, you know what I mean? Like, right. You grow up and you're like, fuck, all right. Makes fucking like, I would perfect sense. Like. I don't get it twisted. There's plenty of experiences in life I would have preferred not to have went through. For sure. And I can't say those experiences made me a better person. Mm -hmm. Or overall. But it added to something. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. So it's like, all right, whatever. I just got to take that. I got to take it it's with It's part it. of your story. Yeah. yeah. You just got to take it. You got to roll, roll with that punch. Like, whatever. Absolutely. You know what I'm yeah, for sure. That's what I was saying. Like, you know. As a as an artist, like you, you fight, you fight those feelings, like mm -hmm. you know what I mean, like. And as we were talking earlier, before you know, we jumped on Cam, and I was like, you gotta tell the truth, like you know, I'm a songwriter. Someone used they used to always like, are you a songwriter or an artist first? I'm like, that's a stupid question. I'm all of it. Yeah, I don't know which one comes first. I'm all of it. Doesn't you know I mean? artist encompass all of that? 
Yeah, but then like, okay, so like, there's a um, I hate when, I hate this thing now. Like people, people try to shame you for trying, right? For sure. And I hate that. Like, by the way, I don't try. I'm not. I'm not trying to be. I'm not an aspire, aspiring artist anymore. I, I've been. You're paid. professional. Yeah, you, you know are, what I'm saying. You're a professional yeah, artist. You're yeah. only trying to grow that, and I'm not being cocky or anything. I'm just. I don't no, you're keeping the buck, dude. I yeah, want to say that. Like sometimes yeah. I was watching. It was like, yo. Sometimes you gotta let people know. Like, yo, I'm we, certified. I I'm just fucking. Out I, here. Like, I just I'm, told. I bro, you fucking commented on the video I posted. I'm like, you gotta be cocky sometimes yeah. and tell yourself, yo, I'm that motherfucker. All right, it I'm was not, you. It was actually you. I was watching. Yo, Dame Dash said it. He goes, I'm not Batman. No, bro. Did you watch the interview that he just dropped? Yes. I'm not Batman. I'm that man. I drive a that mobile. I fucking love him, dude. Wait, Dame. Okay, I'm from Brooklyn. What I a love, fucking I love, original, I love original Rockefeller, thinker, bro. I love Rockefeller. Rockefeller is the label I aspire to build. I'm gonna give the right? horns real quick, not to interrupt you. I'm sorry. I have to give the horns to Dame. Uh, oh, fucking, you gotta buy. It. That's the Sensei. He is. He should put Sensei in front of his name, son. Like Sensei, Mr. Miyagi, Sensei Dash. Like you know what I'm saying? Like he's the, and he's not supposed to be on. You're not supposed to like your Sensei. A lot of people. You make, hate your Sensei. He's supposed he to put you through hell. But he made you. He made you the ultimate warrior, dude. Bro. When he, when he, you know what I'm saying? You know, like, he said one thing in the interview that blew my mind. Not like it wasn't even like a complex of an idea, too. He was like, "Me and my wife make our own children's books for our kids." That's lit. Which is, which is just basically what he said was, "We don't let society dictate anything that our kids think. Everything that we think and our beliefs are going to be instilled in our kids' heads." Right. Which is such an independent. I do my own thing. I'm a boss. Thing to say I respect it I respect the fuck Out of that shit All of it I, Like Dame is on the same Alright I'm an artist exec Right mm -hmm. I have my own label I've also worked for labels I, I'm a ghost writer A lot of people Don't know that I've ghost written My whole That's career. fucking tight dude You know what I'm saying Like That's You know like to no avail. Can you elaborate on that a little bit more? Like, what is what is? Because there are a lot of infamous ghostwriters in the industry that a lot that a lot of people don't know that write a lot of songs for people. Yeah, it's all right. Ghostwriting, we starting. There's no actually. There's not You know what's funny? There's no more ghosts no more. The ghosts they all writing, coming to the front. The forefront. Go, you're right. We outside. We Quentin Miller. We ghost well, no the more. Quentin Miller and Drake and Meek Mill yeah, thing yeah. was like well, when I think the ghostwriting thing kind of like really came to mainstream. People understood that I, like, oh okay, there is like a collective that helped write songs. I hate. I hated that whole situation. Why? It was so corny. It was just lame because that's not how it go, bro. Like anybody who really make music and do this shit know that it's a team effort. Majority of the time. It is. Right? Like, all right, this song I wrote like last night coming into the day, like, there's no there's no team. I wrote all of it, right? Mm hmm But I bounced the whole song off my boy who's another artist last night. Right? Mm -hmm. We was just in my shop, like I also own a car dealership. You know what I'm saying? I can't, I can't, I'm not gonna shout out the name because I kind of separate those things. That's okay. We outside. Smart. We outside, smart. No, we got, smart. We smart. Diversifying our portfolios. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Nipsey Hussle. Respect to you, bro. You know what I mean? Like learned learned how to be. You know what I mean? A businessman in this thing. That's remember the question you asked me earlier. Mm -hmm. That's the most. That's the most takeaway I've learned from being a rapper in this game. It took me a while to f find that answer. But I fuck with that. The, 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 you thought on it. Though. I'm listening. Every question you ask me is, is in yeah, the back of my mind. Yeah, I'm a rapper. Yeah. Don't get it twisted. I'm yeah. still freestyling in the back. I'm trying to figure it out. You know what I yeah, mean? Like, that's like, awesome, dude. But Because I want to tell the truth. I don't want to just give you an answer just to give you an answer. No, I, dude, you're and the, crushing And the truth right came now. in the conversation. The truth is business. It taught me how to be a businessman. Because mm -hmm. I came in as an artist. I came in as a, someone that thought this thing was about talent. And it's not. Boy, they, they like to say this 10, whatever. This shit is 99.9999% who you know? business. Business and who you know, right? And 0.1% everything else. Straight business, bro. Who you know is business. Like, okay, like, like meeting someone is business. Like, when they say who you is not, who, it's your network. That's business. It is. Right? Yo, like, I made it my business to go befriend this person. Mm hmm And then befriending that person he made it his business to make sure that our interaction becomes lucrative right that's business that's business you know what i'm saying like yep. and like when you start to learn true meanings of business like the, the basics of business people think business is like oh i sold something for ten dollars i made a hundred no mm -hmm. business starts in just the fucking interaction the meeting the rapport yeah like you start your business from that moment that person is judging you so by the time you get to the idea of what you guys can make money together with, mm -hmm. 
they might walk away because they didn't like all the business you did before, like in the sense of their co- your conversation. Are you right. built rapport with them? You know what I'm saying? Right, right, that's right. Like, and a true businessman can dissect you in one conversation. Quick, quick, quick. And just one look. Mm-hmm. One feel feel about you. The first few words. Now, how did how did you adjust to that lifestyle? Like, like, like. I mean, obviously, like you went in there as an artist, had mm-hmm. to learn how to be a businessman. Like, what were some of the things that, like, you were like, "Yo, I need to fucking sharpen on that." Like, what were the Getting moments robbed. that, like, really? Getting robbed, basically, robbed to you. You rob, you like robbing finessed, yourself, like, like finessed out of your own bread, basically. You robbing yourself because you paying people for things you could do for yourself. See, I preach that a lot. That like, <laughs> it's funny that you say that because like robbing yourself. This whole podcasting, I, I, the whole, the whole reason why this is where it's at right now is all because I want, I didn't want anybody saying they put me on. You know right. what I mean? Like, I wanted to learn how to do this all myself so I didn't have to, like, rely on anybody. Right, right. You know what I mean? Like, I'm a good team player, Mm -hmm. but I hate being on teams. You know what I mean? Damn, you put it, you put, you, like. Like, I'm a great team player. I'll be a great team player. You might have to co-write my book, you know what I'm saying? But 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 if I I I could have a team of all of me, (sighs) we'll crush. I say that all the time. If I could just find another me. But this is a, what, there's, there's you know three why? people in my life that have think that think at the same speed as me. One of them is that right there. Yeah, he thinks at the same. Dude, he's doing shit right now that I would do. What well, I don't even I don't have to say anything. To him. He just does it. I, I'm peeping. I'm peeping the operation. Yeah. I respected like, I, you, all right, you his know, shirt says creative director. Coincidentally, peep. Peep. isn't that hilarious? Yeah, can we? Can we? Can we pan right, out? So the, we'll get a. I'll, I'll get a shot. I'm I'll launch, audit it in the video. I'm launching. <laughs> no, no. So I'm launching. Um, I started working on my line, which I should have been done years ago. Mm-hmm. I stopped. Um, I'm starting to work on my Gem Heart line. And I've been looking for, for like, you know, like other designers and creative people, minds. Creative minds to put together like these, like these dope ass clothing. Lines. Cause I mm-hmm. love fashion too. I'm, I'm a Gemini. I'm a true mm-hmm. Gemini. Mm-hmm. Through and through, I, I could get the gab. I'm a jump from left, right. You do down. have the gift of gab. You're a very good speaker. Could be overwhelming sometimes for people not for me it works good in like my i said house. people that think at the same speed as you <laughs> yeah. it's not it's not no anything. right because like like the the average person i'll be talking to they look bored or they're like shut the fuck up and i'm like or they're probably overwhelmed they are overwhelmed yeah. so much i throw so much information facts you can bang, be, bang, 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 well bang. you're well, i feel like when you're an intimidating guy and you speak well it intimidates people because sometimes people will talk to you and they're so intimidated by you that they feel like they just need to say something smart right, right, right. to feel like they're part of the conversation. Yeah, yeah. In reality, they're not listening to anything. They're just so insecure. They're like, oh my God, I got to say something smart. Right, this guy's right, going to think I'm an asshole. Right. <laughs> you know and I don't saying? be trying to preach. And I just be... I'm, you just be yourself. I'm a tangent-ass person. I'm also, I'll go off on tangents all the time. Bro, you know I'm, I'm ask this kid right here. I'm, I'm, I'm rant king. Oh man, I see something on TV. I'll go off, son. Oh my god. Like, and I, I was yo pound sign. Respect the rant. I like the. I, I, mean, I, I fucking go off all the fucking time. The rant, yeah, bro. you like, have to. Sometimes so, you gotta respect the rant. You bro. have to respect the rant because sometimes it's a pure thought and it makes sense. My favorite rant. My favorite ranter in the world. Kanye West. Like, that's what? He's a rant. Bro, Kanye. If you listen to some of the shit, dude, when he was on Drink Champs, he blew my mind in like the first fucking 30 seconds of his interview. He was like, he's like, man, I fuck with architecture, man. I'm into architecture. I like building buildings, but the concept of a house, that's just how they control you more. <laughs> it's such an oxymoron, like, but it's a real. fucking genius, bro. <laughs> yeah. I was like, dude, 30 seconds into this interview, because I, I watched this shit like, like I'm taking notes because I know he's going to spit some shit, you know? Yeah. Listen, but like 20 seconds in, he just blew my fucking mind about like, like, cause I'm, I'm thinking in my head, like I need to get a house. Cause it's like, a, mm-hmm. it's like, it makes me feel like a, like a real adult. Like, oh, okay, I got a crib now, yo, yo. but, but then he I'm sits going through that right now, but he sits there and he says, yo, a house is just a way that governments control you. Cause think about it. Like if you piss off the government enough, mm-hmm. they ain't going to take your house. So do you really own it? No. Nah. Yeah. No. Nah. You so don't. Just, it's a false sense. Just the way he said that made, made sense. And like like Andrew Tate, like the guy we were talking about earlier, he him and Kanye West have like something in common. They're both like very like they they're very nomadic. Like they move around. They don't really have like a set home base. Home is just wherever they go. It's a book bag. Me too. That's fire. That's why I came when you say yo two and a half hours. I'm like, bro, I'm sliding, bro. I'm a I'm a road runner for real. I, I like fuck to with that, I hate bro. driving. Mm-hmm. I hate driving now because I've done I put so many miles. On the road, bro. bro the amount of times I've driven to Fort Pierce, then don't get me wrong. Shout out to Fort Pierce and Port St. Lucie and all the people over there. Yeah. I love y'all. Shout out to the folks. Seven, the amount of drives. Oh my god. Every yeah. I mean, every Whiskey Wonders episode I've ever filmed was in was a drive over That's, there. Bro, okay, so yeah. 
not just for PS Sports at least for Fort Myers in Tampa. I'm all over Florida, Miami, mm-hmm. Orlando. Mm-hmm. Like every other day, like three. I I own a car dealership as well, so I'm always buying inventory. I don't. I haven't trained someone to buy inventory yet, mm-hmm. and I I've been burnt too many times buying blind online mm-hmm. that I have to physically go see yeah the inventory and then make an educated decision from there. Damn. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, right. the game taught me to be a businessman. Yeah. You got to see things with your own eyes you sometimes. Have, same with like music and people tell you like, oh, I could do this for you, not for you, managers, uh, uh, or It's all lip publicists. service. You can tell me whatever now, like, right? So doubling back again, mm-hmm. I learned I need concrete proof of concept. Yep. Right? Yep. So as a businessman, like you tell me, I can grow your social media X, Y, Z. If you pay me X, Y, Z. Cool. Mm-hmm. I have no problem paying you that. Prove it. But though. can you, on paper, and in real time, show me your retention rate, mm-hmm. your I, your plays, your B? I want to see all your T's. You know, your eyes dotted and your T's crossed. Yep. And I have no problem paying you for what you're worth, and possibly overpaying you for it. Mm-hmm. You know, like that's the, that's the game. You know what I mean? Because yep. you don't you don't ever like. Like that's how you get burnt a lot. You know, say so you rob yourself because you didn't do your homework. I didn't do. I should right. do my homework on this company and this publicist and this person. See if he's really who he says. See if they're really about it. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you know, on the surface, you could anybody could pay to play. You know what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. also, anybody can pay to make themselves look a certain way. Right. You know what I'm saying? But if you but, educate yourself a little bit, you can save yourself a lot of money. Proof you don't is in need. The yeah, it's proof is in the fucking pudding. You gotta find that. You know, I'm trying to find your foundation, and if your foundation looks suspect then. we ain't doing business exactly yeah you know what i mean like mm-hmm. and that's how that's how like i moved through life in general now mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying just like all right it made me so i'm jaded yeah i got jaded the game made me so jaded not jaded in a good way jaded in a bad way yeah. it made me look at everybody like like do you have like a like kind of like a distrust for people like off the rip yeah. i mean obviously we all kind of have that but in know. business for sure yeah, you have to be in, in business, business for sure. Like, you have to. It's too much at stake. My livelihood's at stake. Exactly. Right? You, know you have saying? to. You have to be cutthroat. You gotta. You gotta guard your. You gotta guard yourself at all. Like, like say in the ring, at all times. Keep your hands up at all times. Protect yourself in at all business, times. business. Yeah. Keep your hands up at all times. That's interesting. Like, that's a. That's a hell of a like. I, yeah. Keep your hands up in all times in business, especially like there's no ain't no like, the bell never rings in business. Always There's a never fight. a break. Yeah, it's always so. You a better learn how to keep your hands up, stay ready all, all times, I, so you don't have to get ready. Yeah. So you know, what I mean, you said it best. Like, mm-hmm. you know, like, and just like, I don't know. I got to be around a lot of dope shit, like high bridge. I yeah, watched. yeah. Like, tell me, like, what were some of your like highlights of like your career so far? Like, I mean, I, I know that you have a song with a boogie with the hoodie. What was it like working with him and meeting up with him and you know and, and going through that whole experience? So that's such a. That's so cool. I saw I, I saw that Beautiful. video. I was like, that's so... Because he's one of my favorite artists. Yeah. And, and the fact that he... What I like about A Boogie a lot, too, was him and Highbridge. They they understood leverage really early on. And, they're, mm-hmm. and, they're, and they understood, like, yo, we already have a huge following. We don't really need a fucking label for this Dude. shit. You know, they were just really smart about it. And the fact that they were so young and they understood that was just really impressive. I talked about that in the last podcast. But. Yes, they were genius in their movement. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. they did something I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't like, and what they've done, what what Boogie's done is something I still like. I'm still in awe because I watch, mm-hmm. I watch a lot of artists blow, mm-hmm. but this is one that was personal. Right. This was personal because, I right, I'm at a Boogie. Like I never told a story, and I really want to tell a story because there's a there's Please. a, I gotta clear some, some, some. Pass me you know that bottle saying? while you tell the story. Yeah, like I gotta clear, I gotta clear the air on this shit, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, for the record. I'm going to say this for the first time on record. Like, I used to work at Circuit City. I got a job my in high school mm-hmm. at Circuit City. Mm-hmm. When I was at Circuit City, my first, like, day or two at work, I meet this dude, his white boy, I think his name was, like, Andrew. <laughs> and he was, he was, like, 
he was like a hood, like he reminded me of a white boy from Brooklyn, but he was like from Boston or something weird like that. He was from up north though. He was like he, a white boy with sauce. He 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 was, but his sauce was different. Pause. His sauce, he was he was he was mad arrogant. He was mad okay. arrogant, bro. Like, <laughs> okay. but it was a it was like the first time I've ever met somebody with a personality like this. Now you see it a lot. Like yeah, he was yeah. arrogant and funny. Okay. So like the com like his comedy his level of comedy like softened his arrogance. Okay. You know what I mean? Like yeah, 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 yeah. So like I have a friend like that. <laughs> he was he was like just off top like and uh, long story short he goes he's like I told him like he was like yo what do you do so like what do you do outside of work about life? I was like yeah I like cars and I rap and he's like he's like you can rap and I was like yeah he was like freestyle for me right now <laughs> of course and I was like I was like no yeah. he's like he's like he's like if you're a rapper, you should be on freestyle on command. And I was like, I was like, I didn't say I don't have the ability to. I'm just not going to do it for you. Yeah. What, what does that do for me? And he's yeah. like, well, if you did rap for me, there's a producer that's like, that works here. And I would introduce you to him. And I was like, see now, now you're making sense. I was like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've been looking for a producer. And, right, right, and, right. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, he's like. He's like, nah, well, his name's Rock. And he's like, he, he works on Saturdays in customer service. And I was like, all right. And I kind of like, we just blow it over. And like, I get cool with him, right? So I'm going on lunch with this dude. He's like training me. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. He's like, like, he takes a liking to me for some reason, you know? Because I'm like, I'm like, I roll, like, I've always been someone like a roll with insults. If you're still, but see, that's what makes if I can you, learn something from you, I'll just ignore the insults. But like the fact that you can just roll with it and not take it personally yeah, I, makes you fun to be around. Yeah. So he was just like, like that's why he took a liking to you. He's like, oh, this guy's cool. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. Like, he's, he's like, these jabs like, I'm throwing at him. All right, I, I talk shit as soon as I met him, and he just laughed. You know yeah. what I mean? I was like, I found you funny, bro. I was like, yeah, you have a different <laughs> personality. Awesome. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, hell yeah. So we just rolled, and so I end up meeting Rock, who eventually becomes Mr. White. But I've known him since Circuit City. Like, he was producing then on FL Studio and shit, and he already had, like, left Connecticut and had a, I don't want to tell his story, but, mm-hmm. um, he was just in Florida and we met in Circuit City. And from there, we built a friendship, relationship as brothers. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. years, 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 years. You know, years down the road, we had stopped making music together. We done, mm-hmm. you know, like we just got distant. And yeah, it's a falling out. We, it was not even falling out. Like at that time, oh, it was okay. just, we grew up and we got distant. Like I stopped trying to pursue rap. I'm going to tell you, I jumped in studio like 14, told, 15, 16. You, yeah, you told me that. You said that you, 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 Started rapping, then stopped, and getting back into the game again. Right. Okay. So he was, I did that millions of times. But that was the <laughs> first time around. I was like 14, 15, 16. He took me to a studio. We ended up meeting another dude at Circuit City that had a recording studio. Mm-hmm. It became like a, a breathing ground for like. And how old are you when this is all happening? 15, 16. Oh, shit. I'm 15, actually. You're working at fucking Circuit City at 15? Yeah, I've been working since I was 13. Damn. I had my first job um, when I was 12. Really? Yeah. Holy shit, dude. I've been a busboy in a pizza shop since I was 12. Okay. Okay, yeah, busboys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. I think the first time I had was like 16. I, was like, I'm first I grew up with a lot of Italians. I, I'm, I'm like, well. Like, They'll hire you no matter what age you are. <laughs> no, it's not, <laughs> even, it's, not even, it's not even that like like from Brooklyn to Florida. I ended up getting my first job in Florida, but mm-hmm. like I used to hang out in a pizza shop every day in Brooklyn, like down mm-hmm. the block. Mm-hmm. So like I knew bonus, shout out to bonus pizzas. It's not there anymore, but it was just being flat. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, so I've been working forever. So I had job experience. The only reason I got a job at Circuit City because I like I was like when he saw my application, he's like, "You're 15." I was like, "I was like, yeah, but I've been working since I was 13." I was like, "I have two years of job experience." At like, 15 is crazy. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, that's very unheard some, of. Yeah, 17, 18 year old that's just coming on a job. I'm like, you don't even know how they're gonna treat a customer. Right. And, like, the interviewer dude was so, like, taken aback by me. He was probably he was like, shook as fuck. Like, how does this kid know this much yeah, about I was like, job life I was like, this young? Yeah. I was like, my customer service level is, you know, it's adequate. For That's fucking lit, position, dude. Like, merchandising and stuff. I was just, like, yeah. I was finessing. I was saying whatever until he gave me this fucking job. You know, yeah, I always been yeah. good, on my, good on my feet. You know what I mean? You're just a smooth talking guy, bro. Yeah, I, I finessed him. You definitely have the gift of gab. Yeah, I finessed him. That's fire. So, like, I finessed him into giving me the job. <laughs> That's why he put me with this arrogant ass dude Andrew because he thought I was going to quit mm-hmm. anybody that gets trained by this dude I, I'm saying his name is Andrew but it might have been Andrew at the time but right, right, he's going right. to be Andrew for now it's like and he's like the dickhead like trainer that yeah, like no one like, can last was, through and you're like no, you're the guy that like befriended I, him yes that's fire and then he introduces me to Rock and Rock over time 
kind of like schools me, like teaches me how to like count bars. Put you on like how to really write rap songs. Not how to write because he doesn't write. Not write, but like yeah. structure him. Yeah, like he yeah. knew everything about rap, but didn't know how to rap. Right, he did rap at one point, but he didn't like. He was just like, he was like, I'm a producer. I'm not a rapper. I'm right. not a writer. I'm not trying to be in. A, he was just like, yo, like he's like that one coach I can tell that's you, not athletic, but he can break down the whole game plan for you. His best friend was a dope rapper at the time. Okay, so she was like, I know everything about rap because my best friend's a rapper, and I'm right. tell you, like how you like you like you're you have potential, but you need to learn how to structure and just, just ah, ah, ah. Mm-hmm. and he gave me the phonetics of like. Of being a rapper, you know what I'm saying, like the formula, right, right. and then 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 he gave me all of his CD collection, so all the CDs I could never buy as a kid, yeah, I just got for free in one. That box. is fucking tight as. He fuck. was just like, because he already had uploaded it all to his computer and digital. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like all the CDs still, and I was still riding on a six day CD change. I had a three thousand H E V R four. So until we was out here, you know what I'm saying anybody. Who, I don't race no more, but I got some homies that take your money. You know what I'm saying? Slip yeah, for yeah. slip out here, bro. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, for real. For like, real. The dude's building $100,000 dots. And oh, I believe it. Like, I got I got them homies out here. Right I believe now. it. I believe so, it. like, every talking to them, I just had to talk my shit real for the car club people out there. <laughs> Shout the car club people out there, man. Um, but, yeah, so, he gives me all these CDs. From there, I listen to, like, I really get to listen to, like, the biggies, the pox, the this. Like, I listened to all of them, but I always knew the, it was crazy. I always knew the radio songs, the singles. I didn't, like, my parents didn't buy us CDs. Like, we couldn't get CDs. Right. So, like, until the years we could download shit, then I started hearing, you know what I mean? Right. Uh, right, but right. I, you when know, Napster and LimeWire yes, came into but the you're, game, yeah. You're downloading all the popular songs. Right. Yeah. You're yeah, making yeah. mixtapes of the top 18. Basically, I'm making the radio. The radio the playlist, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. I get the, Albums, I'm reading covers inside out of like yeah, yeah. two, three hundred CDs boxes. Bro, R&B, that was rap, that was the everything. best back in the day. Buying the I'm, albums, reading all the lyrics, the oh, books. I'm, it was an experience buying albums back in the day because you can hold shit. it, you can open it. It's just it's just fire. It's a different a, game. You got a magazine and music at the same time. Yeah. That's what it was, basically. It was a little ma- mini it's magazine. A mini magazine about the music you're about to listen to. And they're all different. They all have different artwork, right, different right, lyrics. Right. Yeah, that was the shit, dude. They don't have that anymore. No, so many jobs got lost. So many, yeah. But, but there was a lot of corruption in the music business with the CD sales, too. So Really? Yeah, it's just like people like to fudge shit. And just, you mean a lot like of like, labels was finessing your dollars and stealing the artist's money through CDs and streaming kind of exposed their bum asses and then they figured really? out they figured out to steal oh, your yo, streamings too can you elaborate on that a little bit more because that's be interesting robbing people for no reason bro there's some enough money for everyone to get rich for right. real right, right, when right. it works but it the really reason is. they rob everyone is to for all the people that don't work that they try you know what I'm saying right so you rob the everyone's blanketed in this robbery right mm-hmm. and then like if someone that they're robbing starts to become very like like the cash cow, yeah, they might feel bad that they're, they're robbing you a little bit, they, that they're still robbing you a lot, but, like, they feel like they made you, so... Right, they feel obligated to do it. You know what I'm saying? Like, way. it's like, oh, you, you gotta take the, you gotta take, you know, the good with the bad, which is corny, because you, like, in today's, link, that's why I take from Dame Dash, like, you don't gotta, like, you shouldn't have to rob anybody in this business. Right. Like, I don't gotta steal your publishing, bro, for you to make money. Right. Like, we can negotiate a proper percentage where all of us eat... And you, if you put money up mm-hmm. for this thing to work, okay, we can recoup all that money first before we all split after that. That's cool. I'm cool with that. You know what I'm saying? Because you took yeah. the risk. You know, and if, and we can have some type of X amount or whatever for the risk that you took. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. X fold for the risk that you're taking. I, I got to respect you took a risk on me. You know what I'm saying? He said, he said you're not a boss unless you put up your own money. Right. Right, right, and until you can get to that point, and then when you start putting up your own money, you start understanding these things. Like, Absolutely. I understand why labels finesse because I also have artists now that I try to back, you know what I mean, or support yeah. or help. And mm-hmm. younger dudes like to do what I wish somebody did for me. Right, and it's hard because some of these motherfuckers don't listen. It's like yeah. I ain't listen either, and that's the reason why I got this far. Mm-hmm. So I can't tell them shit either. You know what I mean? Yeah, I can just show you. I could just show you. I just, had, I just had a conversation with my buddy the other day. He's like, he's like, my son doesn't text me back. And I'm like, well, how old is he? And he's like, he's like 22. And I'm like, well, did you text your dad when you were 22? And he's like, no. And I go, 
I was like, well, that's there you go right there. Why are you like, so mad? He's young minded. Yeah, yeah, he's not thinking about like, oh, my relationship with my dad. Yeah. He's just he's thinking about the next female he's gonna hit up today. Like he's not. He's he not they're not on the same. You're not. Yeah. You guys aren't on the same planet. And he has a dad thinking. Well, I may die today. And just like, could be my last day. My my son. Of course. Young. Yeah. Like, of course. Of course. It's like yeah. they're thinking that they think the worst. You, you're programmed to be pessimist. Yeah. And I broke it down to him. I'm like, I feel like your son's just young and he's just being young and like it just changed his whole way of looking at. It. And he's like, Yeah, or, you're right. Or you can just text him. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. cut all that shit. Like That's people get saying. caught up in these roles. Like he has to text me or to. So I feel important. About I never myself. feel, you know, it's funny they say that. I never feel like I need to do that kind of shit. Like if I feel like I need to say something to somebody, I just say it. Yeah. yeah. I don't feel like I need to like wait or like play the fucking like, oh, no. I want to make them fucking just wait on it. Yeah, just, I just tell them what the fuck. I tell, listen, I'm, I'm horrible at this with mom all the time. Like she'll call me like, like I'm in, you know, I, I'm in, like you said, nomad, I'm all over the world, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm in New Orleans or something and I haven't talked to her for four or five days. And you're like, you ain't talked to your mom for four or five days? That's crazy. Like, and I'm like, no, nah, it's like, it's I have like though. a, I have like a, it's like telepathy or something. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you have a connection with your like, mom. I like, I could feel you. you. Like, I, like, we good. Like, you're supposed to be able, like, I feel you. It's like a twin thing. Like, I feel you. Like, I feel mm -hmm. like my sisters. When, like, I know. Like, I'm like, they good. Like, mm -hmm. you know, but I ha I've also learned in, in time, you can't just keep assuming like, they good. You don't need to hit them up. Right, right, right. right? It's good to check on your people every now and yeah, then. Every even now and like then. a daily what's up is I got to, I keep telling them so I got to get better at that with my like immediate family, my sisters. My, I only have two sisters and you know, my mother, mm -hmm. my father, you know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. like, it's just like. I just try to do like uh like, hey, love you text every day. We don't have to talk. Yeah, yeah, I just want you to know that I'm thinking about you and right. I'm, I'm verbalizing right. it to you right now. Right. At least That's, once a day. I got to get better at that. I'm, I'm, I, I say I love you very seldom. Do it. Do it first thing in the morning. Like how you brush your teeth. Mm -hmm. Just be like, oh, brush my teeth. Let me, let me text my mom and tell her I love her. Love you, mom. Yeah. Boom. You're done. It's, it's over and done. She, it's it's, it's going to make her whole day. Yeah, it does. It does. Because I, I really, I'm someone that doesn't say I love you a lot. I, I don't. Really? Nope. It was like, I'll say it to a, a friend before I say it to an immediate family member. Really? Yeah. Why? Because it weighs less. I feel that. That's all. It's just ways less. It's like I can frivolously yeah. say to someone on the text, like, "Yo, love you too." Mm -hmm. but it's like we both know, like, it's not really like. Yeah, it's, it's just, like it's, it's like just a cool a, way of saying goodbye. Yeah, that's all. Right. It's just it's it's a different meaning. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Although it's, I'm spelling it. You know, I've seen a lot of death in my life, so like, part of me, like, when I right. when I I fucking. When I text, I love you to somebody, like I mean that shit. You know what I'm saying? I do like, too. I just don't I do know. Too. I just don't know. Like we don't, we don't, we can't predict tomorrow. Bro, like so I feel like I'd rather just tell you how I feel right now, just just in case. I, that's you know. I agree. I should be way better at it because someone is like I tell you, I ducked the reaper twice. Mm -hmm. For real, for real, like like for real, for real. People say that, but like I got hit by a lady at 45 miles an hour in the Nissan. Holy Milano, shit, dude! And I was jogging and. She basically took my life. I, I basically died. What? On what the so did you go? You obviously went to the hospital, right? I went. I don't know, went through the to, whole process. I see you intensive care. Holy right. shit, dude! I tomahawked out of there, straight to Fort Pierce. Um, that's fucking crazy. So what? Like, how did that? Like, were you were you crossing right. a street, not paying so I'm, attention? I'm jogging. Did, no, yeah. I'm jogging up a major intersection. Right, I jog this place. I tell you every night. I or go run it. I'm jogging up the shit, and I come to light. And I have to preface this because before I left the house, Drake had just dropped this song. It wasn't Drake's song. It's a dude named like Queso. I don't know if you look, pull this up. His name was like Queso Drake. It was a song called Faith. Faith. And the whole hook was like, you just gotta have faith. I was like, no, it was like spell K queso, queso like queso cheese. No, 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 no. It was like K K S O. I was like, it's spell K, K S O or something. Like I don't know. Who don't worry, Elijah. Artist. I would have done the same thing. <laughs> Yeah, it's K okay. that yeah, yeah, I see dash. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. That says Faith Part Two. I don't know if that's the one, but the original one is that one. Damn, that's throwback Drake. So it says dude. 2010. Yeah, so I got hit. Damn, 20, bro. I got hit in 2011. So I don't know if you can. Can you play live right there? Yeah, we can play it. Yes. I'll never forget this song. I was saying, I was listening to song Faith on repeat. Cause it was, just, I told you, I, I learned how to re-release adrenaline. And right, yeah, yeah, you were telling me about, yeah, huh? Mm -hmm. 
I get hit by this car. Listen to the song. And what? I don't know, like, this, like, you see the light thing. I ain't seen no light. Okay. I ain't seen no light. When I got hit, I was very conscious the whole time. Right? Really? I got, yeah, I got, I remember, I, I know, like, the play-by-play, I can feel it. I can tell you right now, every roll I did, every drop, until the minute I hit the floor and blacked out completely. Really? Yeah. I, I, That's really, amazing that you still full, have that memory. I have full memory of being hit. Wow. In, even to the unconsciousness. I have the unconscious memory of also being hit and what I was telling myself. Now, was the person that hit you, were they at fault? Yeah. They ran the red light? Yeah. Yeah. She was trying to catch she was trying to catch a yellow light that then turned red. What the fuck? And and she didn't realize she had like she had turned her head away. She had a child in the backseat. Holy and, shit, dude. Um I went through her I hit her car like a deer. I was so jacked though at the time. I was full, bro. I was like, was there? What, I was, was like the thing. Was the car the fucked up? Yeah, I fucked her shit up. Was there? Was there a part of you that was like, yeah, like yeah? Yo, nah. in high, later, because I didn't, I didn't break a bone. What were your injuries from the from Nothing. the accident? She just killed me on the spot. I caught it, but I came back to life. So no broken bones, no fucking. No, just road rash. Just road rash. Not a broken bone. Not a ligament. So not your a heart torn. stopped. You were yeah. pronounced dead at the scene. It was. It was. Um, Who, how did they revive you? Well, then I didn't get pronounced dead at the scene. So what happened was, it used to take a lot of fat burners there. So mm-hmm. what fat burners do, what a lot of people don't realize, the only reason fat burners really work is because they restrict your your blood flow in your veins and makes your, your heart work double, triple, and quadruple time. Which burns more fat. Yes. Right. It's not actually doing anything else. Right. So what happened was when I got hit, the way the doctor tried to explain it, because they can't really explain what happened. Mm-hmm. It was like, but they did a CAT scan and all these things. It was like, yo, your heart, like, you had to skip the beat. You stopped. Something happened. Like, you know, like, they call it a TIA or whatever the, the hell. It, like, looks like a right. stroke, like, whatever. Mm-hmm. They can see something happen. Like, right, yeah. So they're like, we don't know what happened, but we know, like, I was like, I died for a second. I'll tell you that much. And he's like. Holy shit. And he's like. I was like, on, on impact, I was dead. But I kind of came back to, you know what I mean? He's like, I was like, because I was conscious. I, told, I was telling doctors, and he was looking at me crazy. I was like, I'm conscious of me being hit, everything. Like, I know what, I know exactly what happened. He was, was just like, looking at you like you were crazy? Yeah, and I was just like, look, listen. I was like, I was like, I can tell you, I'm, I was like, I'm fine, bro. I'm just going to be like in aches and pains, and, and like, but I'm fine. Yeah. I'm 100% with it, everything. Yeah. I was having memory lapse, so that's why they were concerned. Mm. Like I had like you know some type of brain bleeding or hemorrhaging or something like that. Internal memory, bleeding. memory. What is that? So I was having memory lapse, which is like I kept repeating the same thing over and over. Oh, uh, okay, okay. So okay, like okay. I would have a conversation and then be like, "Hey, can I have a cup of water?" Having the same conversation. Okay, okay, like, okay. Hey, okay, hey, okay. can I have a cup of water? Five minutes later, and like oh, I got you a cup of. Water. Oh yeah, you oh, did. Wow, can okay, I have a cup okay. of water? Like I've come. It was just memory lapse. So you were probably telling the doctor at, the, at that same time, like you recall everything, and he was just. Yeah, I was literally telling the same thing over and over and okay, over again. Okay, okay. And as I'm saying it, they're like, "He's not okay." I'm watching oh. them like, like, how fucking how frustrating was that? It's weird because it's like they're like, "I'm not crazy, bro." Yeah, they're like, "He's not okay." Like, yo, he's fucked up. Oh my, that's like, my worst nightmare. <laughs> get him the cascade and shit. Some Shutter Island shit. Like, yeah. I'm just like, yo, I'm not fucking crazy. I'm like, like, nah, I'm good, bro. And they're like, nah, yeah, you're you're repeating yourself. You're not good. I wasn't good. I was repeating myself, but I was good though. It was just I didn't. So you got hit by a car going 45 miles an hour yeah. and you have one broken bone? Nah. Just, that's an, that's it's amazing. A mir- it's a miracle. That's a fucking it's amazing. Just, just God and angels. Like, that's it. I don't care what you believe in. How, how, like, it make what, you believe. What was your physical stature? Like, how much did you weigh at that time when you got hit I by the car? I was one, about 176. Probably like <sighs> 8% body fat. So you were slim. Yeah, I was, no, but I was swole. So you were, you, okay, so you, were, you were jacked. Yeah, so I went to I dropped the 154 and I was mad skinny. That that extra 20 pounds was pure muscle I put up. Dude, 170 jacked, you're fucking shredded. Yes. Because I'm was, 216 and I'm pretty shredded for I a 216 was guy. Swole and jacked. Yeah, you 170, I mean? like, you're fucking shredded. There's no body fat on you at all. That's when crazy. I got, like, when I got hit, so like, he was like, bro, you fucked that car up. Like, you were a tank. But he said the only reason I survived is because I took the hit like a... I would have fucking... I would have felt so cool if the yeah, doctor I told me that. Like, yo, you fucked this fucking... Well, he called me you, Superman. You, I swear to God, the doctor called me... First is- thing he said to me was... He goes... 
I'm rolling it. It's the Yo, most awkward life, awkward moment, like top in my life mm-hmm. ever, to get coming in off a tomahawk and be in full runner's clothes that's sweaty and 15 medics cutting all your clothes all off. All your clothes off. Yeah, butt yeah, naked yeah. from the from the chopper all the way into rolling into the, so the ER yeah, ICU yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, bro, like there's no courtesy. Like there's no, no like, they don't care. They're nah, just trying to save you. They're trying to save your life. In yeah, hindsight, if you yeah. die, but I ain't dying. They don't give a fuck about saying your dick. You know what I'm like, saying? Whatever, like, yo, bro, I'm out here <laughs> shrimping right now, bro. Like, yo, this dude, like, yo, this is not good. I just got hit. You <laughs> yeah, know what I'm saying? Just like, got hit. Yo, <laughs> I'm looking at the nurse lady. He's like, yo, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm a grower. I was in the pool, bro. Like, I'm gro- I was in the pool. <laughs> I was like, I just came off a run, you know what that's I mean? That's fucking hilarious. Bro, I was, hilarious. Like, this is this, this what I tell you how sick I am. This is what I'm thinking about as nah, I'm... Nah, you funny. I'm not thinking about fuck. dying as I'm rolling in on the gurney like yeah, I got turned yeah. up here. I'm thinking about, like, yo, <laughs> I'm looking light out here, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, what's going on? Yeah, like, they're just cutting funny. everything that's off. So fucking funny. And funny. <laughs> that's so exactly funny. what I was thinking, bro. And I had my favorite hoodie on. I had like a ba- I was running in like a bait hoodie. Oh, shit. They're okay. cutting my hoodie off, bro. Like, I'm like, you can just unzip it, bro. <laughs> yeah, like, they cut your bait hoodie? They cut it straight up for no reason. Oh, my God. I would have been hot, dog. <laughs> Those hoodies cut. back in the day were so expensive. I, I understand. They can't pull your shorts <laughs> off because they don't know if you got broken bones. All that uh, shit. Okay, oh, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So that's the reason they'll undress you to move. That's why they around. cut you because they don't know they if you're just cut pro- everything oh, off. Okay, so they that cut it at all the seams and just pull everything off of you. So it's like, <laughs> I'm like, bro, it's fucking. So this, Fuck. this is, I'm sick. This is what I'm thinking about, bro. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so I'm completely with it, but I'm out of it at the same time. You uh, know what I mean? Uh-huh. So like, I'm rolling in, and the, like, I guess the surgeon or whoever he is, like, mm-hmm. is the head doctor in the ER, runs over. As I'm rolling on a gurney, and he takes like the flashlight and he's like looking in my eyes, and he's like, he's just like, he's like saying whatever, whatever, whatever. He's like calling out orders and like calling out meds for me, and he goes, he goes, he goes, um, how you doing, buddy? What's your name? And I was like, I was like, like I'm t- I'm with it, but I got the brace on. I'm on the backboard. I'm like, I'm like Anthony. He's like, cause the cop had always asked me that already. Mm-hmm. I'm like Anthony. He's like, you know, that's my real name for people that don't know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's like, um, I'm telling him blah, blah. And he's like, he's like, you know, a year there, you know, the president is. I'm like, I'm answering the questions like on point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's like looking in my eyes and he's like, he's like, he's like, do you feel anything? And I was like, I was like, you, I was like, can you move all your toes and your fingers? And I was like, yeah. I was like, I was like, I move my neck. I was like, bro, I've been, I've been in terrible car accidents before this. I was like, you know, like, I was like, I don't have a broken back or neck. I know I can move everything. I can move everything. <laughs> I tell him that. Yo, you're that like James Franco meme where he's like about to be hung and he's like, yo, first time? Yeah, he's like, <laughs> pretty much. I'm like, I, nah, this is my first car accident, bro. I'm bro, good. I, like, I can feel my toes. I'm like, nah. I'm like, bro, I know. Like, if you don't, because I was like, I know if you can feel the toes, I'm like, your neck is not broken. All that. You doesn't mean that right. you might not still still be injured, bro. Right, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, he just looks at me. He goes, he goes, you'll be all right, Superman. And like taps my chest and walks off. Like he was did just you, like, did you feel like a bit of relief when he said that? Yeah, he was just like, I was so confident in my answers to him, like I was almost cocky, like because I was pissed they were really ripping all of my clothes off. Yo, that's, that's. I was like, I was like, I was, like, I was answer, I was very short in my answers. Yeah. Of course, I just got hit by a car. I'm very pissed. I'm, I'm very angry. Uh, understandably, yeah. You know what I'm yeah. So I'm yeah, giving him totally, very yeah. short answers, and he was yeah. just like, "You'll be alright, Superman," and just slid. And then like when he said that, like he kind of gave me some like like. He give you a little, you know. Boof of, it's boof like when the it's like when the biggest conference. dude in the gym calls you big man. Yeah, he's like, yo, yo he's yo. like, what's up, big man? You, you give me a spot. You yeah, know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. just boosting your confidence. You know? <laughs> he, he had it. He had it the whole time. You know. That's so fire. basically, what that happens, anyways, and I'm like, fuck, bro, I just got hit by a car. Uh, you know, like coming out of that, that's when the depression hits. Like, it's like, was it the recovery process that like the, I, rec- the- I so like another miracle happened. I, like when boy was going to like a IMG camp, mm-hmm. like like a sports camp. Like I'm cool with a lot of like pro athletes. athletes. Yeah, like at the time, and like he he's like, yo, I'm going to this camp. Ah, and like he's like, it's one of like the number one recovery centers like for hurt athletes. And I, he's like, yo, I got a I got a double bed room, like, and I'm gonna be at practice all day, and like you could just just like, crash there. You can use the facility, like that's tight. So I was like. I was like, hell yeah, it's a rehab. It was basically like a big ass rehab gym, like, but with like 
an extremely hot hot tub and like a really cold like ice pool that you can swim through and shit like that. Those so ice pools be fucking. I went to, I basically went to camp for two weeks with him, and I would just smoke weed. I smoke an ounce every day, and like I like like all day I would sleep, recover like I would sleep. They would just say your body sleep is the biggest thing for your body. So I would yep. sleep sixteen hours. I'd wake up for eight hours. I'd eat. I'd smoke in those eight hours. Smoke. Go, right go downstairs. Go in the um, hot tub, mm -hmm. and I would follow all like the sports like medicine people and like do all the stretches they were doing, and stretch in the hot tub because like you're more elastic there. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. you know I got hit, so I'm stiffening up. Yeah. So yeah, like yeah. get in real extreme heat, stretch out, stretches everything out. Jump yeah. in the pool, ice pool, and swim, so you become mobile again while you're still cold. So it's like it's it's genius. It's like hot cold therapy. Yeah. And I just like I did that for two weeks, bro, and I had no stiffness, no nothing, and I was perfectly fine. That's amazing. For like I just smoking weed and doing hot cold therapy the whole time. I don't know if that's a After real getting thing. hit by a car going forty five miles an hour. Yeah. No broken bones, no nothing cap. but some road nothing but some road rash. Shit. And this is no cap. This How was that road rash getting into the hot tub though? I know that shit stung. Yeah, it stung like a that shit stung like the first time bitch, in that chlorine bro. stung like a what? bitch, bro. It kept peeling like the like the road rash kept peeling because uh, of the chlorine. That was the worst part was the road rash. I, had, I like I got hit so hard. My it's like so, it's so unforgiving. It's like no matter where you move, it hurts. You put water it under it, hurt. It's fucking back, it just it just doesn't. Like, it's just, it back, hurts. My shoulders. Yeah, I didn't get my face, bro. I, for some reason, like thank goodness. <laughs> Let's get the whole amount for that. <laughs> Still pretty out of here. <laughs> nah, it was um. I jumped like I told you the doctor came in and said the only reason I survived because I did it like a stuntman. All the years of watching movies and just training, That's I naturally hilarious. So, saved my own life by jumping into the car instead of jumping away or trying to So most people die to get hit by a car is cause you see the car and they go they tuck. They, right, right, right. And they get plowed. The car can't right. stop quick enough to to, to not plow you over. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Even if it doesn't hit, kill you off impact, the plowing's going to kill you. Right. So, what, I was jogging naturally, I was in mid-stride when I seen the light, like she's, like, she's running the red light, I'm mid-stride, so I just went, oh, shit, like, like, I tell you, I remember all of it, I was like, oh, sh like, I just, it was like a, you didn't even, it was enough time to think, I was just yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I seen light, second. and you're like, oh, shit, you're like, you know, like, I remember saying like, oh, boom, like, and I'm rolling over the top and flying 25 yards. Holy shit. You know what dude. I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. That's and crazy. When she hit me, like, but I just I covered my face. Or my face would have went through her windshield. And I would have really got hurt. I would have hit that. I went like this. So like my shoulders. So you have like great reflexes. Yeah, I went, I covered my face. Like, but that's from that's from fighting. Yes. That's why that's why I did it. It, yeah. was, like, it was like all the years of just hanging out, like in the gym, like that's the one thing that saved me. Like, yeah. Instead of like, although you're not gonna block, I couldn't block up. I was trying to block you can't a block punch a car of a fucking coming. Car, right, I know what you're saying. But I blocked my head but from that natural, banging the but window. But that natural instinct to protect yes. your head saved you. Yes, it ba it banged my shoulder, my shoulder like like the Floyd. Yeah. I shoulder rolled the car, the wind, the windshield. My shoulder hit it and fucked my shoulder up decent. Like it still hurts like a bitch. Cause wow. it never broke anything. It just hurts like mm -hmm. on certain. Did it dislocate? Nothing. Nothing. It just hurts like a bitch on certain days. So it was like, Holy shit, I like, I, I like rolled into it and it was just like, boom. And like, I flew off and everything else was the road. How far did you fly when you got hit? They, I think it was like 25 feet or some shit. That's like, I got hit in the turning lane. I ended up, I got hit in the beginning of the turning lane. We ended up in the intersection, in the middle of the intersection. So whatever the distance that is, that's where I was. My, Holy my body shit, was in the dude. middle of the, 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 the U. I was no longer in a straight. Just away. the fact that you didn't have any broken bones. Nothing. I'm gonna tell you the most trippiest part. I tell you the trippiest, trippiest, trippiest part of all this shit. Like, Elaborate, please. I get hit. I get hit. When I wake up, like when I come to, mm -hmm. it's like adrenaline kicks in like a minute or two later. I just popped up. I stood up. Like that's how they knew nothing was really broken because I stood up. I was like, so you stood up after you got hit? Yeah, I like adrenaline, like the when the reboot, whatever. When I kicked back and it came from wherever the hell I went, I whew, I stood up like adrenaline, like hundred percent adrenaline rush. Like, like I'm I'm good, I'm good, bro. I'm yeah, good. Yeah, <laughs> yes, pretty much. I was like, <laughs> yeah, and, and then it was, but everything was in super slow mo. Right. And it was like it felt like three hundred people. Like it looked like the fucking gladiator arena. Like everyone was out their car just looking at me. Like oh my wow. god, 
like, and I just, the lady was, I could hear the lady saying, oh my God, I kill somebody, kill somebody, kill somebody. She was like tripping. She was on the curb, like, oh, she was like, kill somebody, kill somebody, kill somebody. She was bugging out. Like, she was, like, if I had not woke up, Whoa, she would have wigged yeah. out for the rest of her life. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, yeah. So, sure, like, sure. I, like, I, like, popped up, and then, like, there was already a cop there. So, he grabbed me, like, my shoulders and, like, sits me down, like, like to his wheel. And mm-hmm. I'm, like, I'm backed up to his wheel. Mm-hmm. And he's, like, and he's, like, he's, like, buddy, are you all right? You know what just happened? You know, I, you know what happened to you? And I was, like, I was, like, I got hit by a car. And he's, like, he's, like, yeah, buddy, you got hit by a car. He's, like, he's, like, he's, like, a pretty big car. And I was, like, and I was, like. I was like, yeah, and I looked to the right, but everything's in super slow mo. I'm like in full. I'm like, I'm, yeah. I'm leaned. It's out. like in the, it's like in war movies when the bomb goes yeah, off and yeah, everything's exactly. slow. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah, real yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what's happening. I'm like, and I look to the right, and there's a whole priest on my right shoulder, in a collar and everything, like a whole in Catholic, real life. I swear to God, a whole Catholic priest is to the right of me. Really, he's also kneeled by me with a crucifix out. I just hear him go. That fuck you up a little bit? He's just whispering like this. And I'm like, this is weird. If this is like the gates of heaven. This Are you weird. conscious when this is Yeah, going this on? is all, this is real life. This I'm like, I'm looking at this. I'm like, if this is the gates of heaven. There's some weird shit right here. Holy I don't shit. know what the fuck going on right now, but there's a priest and a cop. It sounds like a, a bad joke. A black guy, a priest and a cop walking to the bar. That's <laughs> like, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's like, that's like, I'm like, I'm looking. The, I'll tell you, I'll be like, I'm cynical in my head. So like mm. in the worst moment, that's what I thought. I was like. I looked at him. I looked at there was a cop and there was a priest and I was like a black guy, a priest, and a cop. And I just instantly thought of every stupid funny joke like that <laughs> yeah, you've heard yeah, as a kid. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. jump the black guy, the priest, and cop jump on the mountain. To, like you know what I mean? I don't remember yeah, people yeah, remember yeah, those yeah. jokes. Like I'm like, and he goes, he goes, the priest goes. I was across the intersection and watched you run across and. The car hit you. And I was praying for you from the moment she hit you to the time that you woke up and now that you're talking to me. Holy shit. How did you feel when he said that to you? I didn't know how to feel. I didn't, yeah. I didn't, it's I heavy. just looked at him and I said, all I said was, thank you. That's heavy. That's all I said. I, I was conscious enough and then and take everything in slow motion. I just said, Thank you. Yeah, but you're probably just thinking the state of mind where you're like, yeah, whatever, bro. No, no, I w- it was, it was, he was the, f- besides the cop speaking to me, he was the first one that I heard clearly. When the cop was asking me your name and stuff, I was, I answered out of like robotic. I know, yeah. He's like, yeah, what's your yeah, name, yeah, Anthony? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right, right, what's right, your right. date of birth? I just, rob- it was robotic. It was like something I've said a thousand times. Yeah. When the priest, when I looked to the right and I looked at the priest, and he spoke. It was different. It was poised. And it was, he cut through the vibration of the, I had, I was like. He I, saw I, the real you in that real moment. I, I felt like I was in between. You, like, Dimensions? Yes. Yes. Interesting. I, 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 you know, like I'm into theoretical physics. So like, Elaborate. I believe in, in um, the, like the multiverse for real. Like I do too. So, and for different reasons. So, so the more, like. I felt like I died in one, one in another universe. I'm dead. Yep. I'm living this one, but in another universe, the outcome wasn't this one. No, I saw I saw million, my funeral. I saw my yeah. I, I dreamt it. I saw my funeral. I saw like That's fire, I, I saw the other universe. I saw my ending in the other universe. That's and it was, fucking. That's interesting. It was kind of. It was. It was sad. It was sad. It was sad as fuck. Cause I was living everything that I'm doing now until that point, and that it ended at that point in that universe. Right, and it could be trippy of things like no, I, I dreamt this. later. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't know, like just my brain trying part, to make it, sense. It was a of part of you that hit. died. Yeah, I, and it did for real. It's a so. representation of maybe an old you yeah. that left you. Yeah, yeah it did. It, it that at, at that moment for sure. For, at that moment, I can never deny. I That's didn't why I have feel faith. like I feel like certain moments like that, like even though for you it was a traumatic experience mm. could have been a defined moment in your life that dictated a huge arc. Right. You know, it, it did. It did. It, it was a downward. It wasn't a, 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 
I mean, I'm arc. sure there were bumpy parts. Yeah, it was a, it was a, um, right. It was a hell of an arc. Like it, it took me, cause I was in the zone at that time. I felt like everything was going right, and then things went were going wrong. And then when I got hit, it was like, I got. When you got hit, was this before your? This is before all of your like success, right? Like yeah, like, okay, yeah. Okay. Like I was in, I was in. You know what I noticed about transition. People? I noticed this about um. Joe Rogan talked about this with like UFC fighters that like have like near death experiences. Mm -hmm. They come back and they're like weirdly dialed in. Do you think that maybe that like near death experience was like maybe a trigger that like maybe was the catalyst to why you're at where you're at now? Maybe. Yeah. It had showed, to have, had to have Okay, been. so I'm not gonna say it brought it didn't um it didn't um uh, it didn't motivate me to be like I gotta. I gotta be a rapper. Yeah, it, but it well, made you. Like, I was already a rapper. What what got me up, and not die? I I I, I always skip this part, but I could have chose to die. It, dude, I could have chose to die when I got you, hit. You faced your mortality for. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I could have chose to die because yeah, I know it was very. Okay, so I said I was conscious. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't see no light. It was abyss. It was just blackness and darkness. It was just pure abyss, and I don't know if that's like. I respect you for saying that, bro. There was no light. There was, I don't care what the fuck they talking about. There was dead blackness. It was like, you know, when you get knocked out and you just black, like, yep. black out? I was yep. black the fuck out. That's it. It was just blackness. And it was me and my thoughts. And to me, I thought, that's what hell is. So you were still conscious with your own, like... And, and yeah, you were really? conscious in infinite abyss. So um, that's hell. So it's just endless thoughts that could just never be, just like... Your, your consciousness... Consciousness I, I thrown in, in a never-ending, falling, dark well. I don't even like being alone with my thoughts now, let alone in turn any blackness where I can't control it. People say, um, um, you know, like, in, uh, unfortunately, people that are incarcerated say that 23 and 1 is the worst thing you could ever go through in life, right? Mm -hmm. I felt like I was going to 24 and 7. You know what I'm saying? Like, wow. I was going to indefinite abyss. And in that falling, whatever that shit was, mm -hmm. I was just like... It felt good though. Yeah. It felt it felt it felt comforting. Like it was meant to be? N no. It was a false comfort. Mm. You just wanted to fall asleep and just let it happen. Right? And like like I felt so tired. Like when I got like that hit and I was on the floor, I mm. felt like I was going to like the you, most oh, like you, eternal like, peace. Like you almost sleep. had a choice of going to, to sleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could let. That's interesting. I could have just like went to sleep if I, if I wanted to. So do you think that like I fought it when somebody comes to a near death experience like that? Like temptation of like eternal sleep is like. It know, felt so good, bro. It's a, it's a choice. It felt so good, bro. It felt like the best sleep in your life. Girl, like mean, ecstasy, I, almost. Tell, like, tell like, me the best nap you've ever had in your life, and times it by ten. That's where you. That's what I felt like at the moment. It's like a baby. You know how a baby lays down and he's like, yeah. That's it interesting. was like I felt like I was snuggling into eternal sleep, and I was like, as I was snuggling, I was like, bro, I ain't even platinum yet. I ain't dropped an album yet. So the fact that you were fucking I swear to God uh, saved like, your that, life. That's what opened my eyes. I said to myself, I told you I'm cynical, bro. I'm like, I'm Dude, like, I ain't just go platinum yet. I ain't drop an album yet. And then my last, my last part, I this, said to myself, that like blew my mind a little bit. I'm gonna tell in you a weird way. I say they're gonna say, Jim Hart went out like a bitch on fucking Port St. Lucie on Arosa Boulevard, got hit by a car. I was like, that's some. That ain't no G way to die. It's not a G way to die at all. Not for me. Fuck not no. Not for me. No. No. Fuck that. Like if it was a going out and like you know, God forbid, I'm not even put it in the air. Like. A different way, like, but that way was just not. I thought that's it was, not the way. I thought it was. I just thought it was soft. I was like, I could survive this hit. That's fucking real. I just funny, thought it was dude. soft. I just thought it was like, yo, this that's that's it's really bitch made to die right now. For your story, it didn't make sense. No, I told myself like I was like, it was really bitch made for you to die right now. For you to, to you think it's okay to die right now is really bitch made. You need to get up. That's and that's literally, I popped my eyes open and adrenaline jumped through me. Dude, that's, that's the only that's, last thing I remember. That's one of the coolest things I've ever heard. I think. It was. Just and I don't, I don't want to I want to say that out of respect nah, to people that's been at war and stuff nah, like that. Nah, that nah, you know what I'm saying? Like, like just the fact that you were in that situation, and you were like, no, like fuck that. I didn't like, give up. I could have quit. I could have really quit. I could have left it. You went the uncomfortable route. Yeah, I came back. It's the harder route. I came back to fight. That's it. I just had fight more. I had a little more. Isn't fight that what life me. is? It's struggle, right? That's it. You chose the, you chose to struggle more. Truly, truly, I was like, fuck it. I'm I'm that's I'm up it. for the challenge. Like, yo, bring me back. I get the horns.
That's fire. Like, I was like, bring me back. I'm up for the challenge. Like, you know what I'm saying? I could go. I could go right now if I want. You got fight in you, dude. I like you. I was trying. I was trying to fight. I fought, dude, I, I could sense that. You have fight in you. You're like, I'm, you're not a, you're not like a, I don't quit on, you know what uh, I mean? I've quit. Okay. I, I've quit. I See, can quit, say everything Quitting else. and walking away aren't, aren't the same thing. Yeah. I've walked away from everything else in my life but music. Yeah, quitting is quitting sure. and walking away are not the same thing. Walking away from something is when what you're doing no longer serves your purpose. Quitting right. is when shit gets hard and you get weak. It's a difference. Got you. I like that. I like that. It's a difference. Yeah, it's a, I've walked away from a lot of things in life. Right. I never felt like a quitter Quit when I walked anything. away. Because yeah. it made se- it made sense to me in in at the person that I was in that time in my heart that decision made sense. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Relationships. Um, ventures, all types of shit. Anything. Yeah, I used to hoop. I used to, I told you, like, I, I had a, I, I had hoop dreams. You know what I'm saying? You ever heard of, of hoop dreams? Like, I had a, what? I, had hoop I grew dreams, up in the AM1 street ball era, bro. Same. I wanted to be hot sauce so bad. Yeah, bro. I had then Professor dreams. came along and I was like, what? White boys can ball like that? And I'm like, bet. So I'm out here in the fucking driveway practicing slip and slides and shit. What? What? P- playing NBA. Pass the N- Russells. <laughs> yeah. Pass the Russells for that. I love you, dog. Shout out to Rebels, my AAU. Um, you know what I mean? YBOA team, you know what I'm saying? YBOA, that's how Shout you out, you know what? Shout out to the professor, bro, for Shout fucking bro. for fucking going from the N1 mixtape to teaching Hollywood actors how to handle a basketball from movies is tight as fuck. That's that's tight. I, I remember watching him come through on the open run. He fucking impressed everybody, mm-hmm. went on the tour, crushed it, ended up winning the competition. And now he's still balling, doing the same thing that he was doing, what, 12, 13? That was a while ago, bro. ESPN 2? Dude, I was living in my oh my, I was, I was in my childhood home when that shit was on TV, bro. That was a long time. And he's still balling. I just got to respect that. The, the hoop in you never, the hooper in you never dies. Once a hooper, always never. a hooper. That discipline is just transition. Never. And I can say that before I got the music, the discipline of basketball is what? allowed me to be able to even dream of a dream of a rap dream my hoop dreams gave me gave me confidence to have a rap dream because i thought who was your who was your like your hooper idol fuck ai dude alan iverson was fucking fucking fuck yeah dude alan iverson had me wearing sweatbands on my legs that man was the fucking shit ai is the is the personification of hip-hop and hooping you know what I'm saying? He is the 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 go off the dude. archetype, the father, the forerunner, the one that took all the bullets for us. You know, he what I'm really saying? fucking did, dude. Like so, like he got so much shit for having he's tattoos an icon. in the NBA. He's an icon, bro. Like he really is, dude. They like to give him flack. You know, they like to discount people for not getting the ring, but he got so many other rings. It's different type that, of rings that other players will never be able to hold. Bro, I wore sweatbands on my leg, on my head, on my arm because of AI. What's crazy is, like I said, certain things went over your over your head as a child. I didn't know about the the scandal. The I mean, not the scandal. The the bowling alley the bowl, thing. Did you, you watch the documentary? Yeah, I didn't. So when I fell in love with AI, was so crazy. it was just pure basketball. I didn't know. I didn't know the that controversy either. before that. Yeah, I didn't, neither. I wasn't. Um, I wasn't privy to that. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. so, AI. I, the reason I really loved AI though, I lived in. I told you, I grew up in Brooklyn. You asked me that earlier. I, I always told you, I always double back for you. You know what it is? I live we in can never say Brooklyn enough, man. Come on, man. So Brooklyn's Brooklyn, always got horns on here. Every summer, I lived in Philly with my godmother and my god sisters. Because Brooklyn summers got real hot and a lot of people were getting killed. So my parents felt like it was safer to send us to West, Northwest Philly to go live with my godmother for the summer break. And then you I ran that? into treacherous Philly. <laughs> Bro, that's interesting, though, because it's like... Treacherous Philly. Your parents right. would send you away because you knew that there was going to be gang violence. Yeah. That they needed to protect you from. Yeah. And they were working a lot. And then they sent you to West Philadelphia, born and raised. On, on the, the playground where I spent most of my, my days. days. <laughs> cool out, Maxie. Bro, I'm t- all right. You know what? Okay, the first summer they bring us there... I fuck with you, man. You're cool as fuck. I stay over there because it looks just like... The fucking Fresh Prince, you know, like where, yeah, where yeah, they took where they took Fresh Prince from and yeah. took him to Bel Air. Yeah. That schoolyard, that's a common. Um, I don't know what they call it, in like like uh, surveying where it's a common layout in Philly. So okay, a lot okay, of okay, schools okay. look so like have, that, have and that neighborhoods look. Have, it looks identical. Yeah, yeah. You can go to probably thirty neighborhoods in Philly that have that same almost structure. Yeah, yeah. So like when I got to my, 
I'm, you know, I'm like seven, right? Eight, mm-hmm. but I'm, you know, I'm a street kid from Brooklyn, so I'm, I'm kind of more. I'm seven going on fourteen. You You're know what I mean? More bold, yeah, yeah, yeah. So seven I see that we pull up down fourteen, the, right? Pretty much. <laughs> I, I roll down the block with my parents, and I'm looking out the window like, oh, you guys, you gonna stay with your godmother? I love my godmother, but I'm like, I gotta stay here for like how long? <laughs> Yo, that's a two funny, months. That's one of the funniest shows ever. Bro, shit. I'm seven going. <laughs> yeah, I'm seven. I'm going on fourteen, bro. You, you, I'm in the streets. I'm outside. I'm off the porch. <laughs> Early, you know what I'm saying? Like for real, real. I was off the porch probably since I was like, "That's fucking hilarious, bro." bro. I'm sorry. I've been walking to the corner store by myself since I was five years old. You know what I'm saying? It's different when you go up in Brooklyn. That's New York shit, though. I feel yeah, like. like cause all right, your mom tells you, like you want like my older sister's two years older than me, so she's seven, I'm five, and then my older cousin is thirteen, so it's not you walking. I'm a five year old walking around the block by myself. I'm like crazy, like yeah. But there's a team of cousins, and you're the youngest. Yeah. The closest to the youngest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I the oldest that. cousin is 16, and they're supposed to be watching over all of you walking they, two blocks and, down. And to they're them. not, of course. Fuck no. They oh, did. Yeah. They've been left. Okay. Been left. So we out here. We out here fending for ourselves. You know, like that's crazy. Navigating the fucking like New York. Yeah. Sidewalk and sidewalk. I got to meet him. We got 15 minutes to go to the store and back, or we all get our ass whooped. Right. So my cousin hits the right. She goes down the block and goes to the right. She wants to go see some dude. Yeah. Ah, this one goes with this way. And they tell all of us, we better be back in 10 minutes in front of the building or they whoop our asses. So oh, we, shit. you know what I'm saying? So yeah, it's like, yeah. we got to be back from the store because we got to come back with some proof that we went to the store. Listen. That was the whole reason of us going outside. You, you had to buy saying? something from the store. So we go get Whether it like, be a gum yeah. wrapper or whatever. Yeah, yeah, we got to come yeah, back yeah, with yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We come, we meet, <laughs> yeah. we're back in front of the, the building in nine minutes because we only want to get our ass for <laughs> They're back in 14 minutes and we're all back upstairs in 15 minutes and no one snitching on nobody because we all did something we weren't supposed to do. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? That's this is growing up in, in New York. You yeah, know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. Do you ever like like you have to give yourself a moment where you're like, yo, I made it. I made it to the professional level. Yeah, but it doesn't matter until you're rich. Well okay. It doesn't matter to to the to th- your inner circle until you can do for them. So it doesn't matter who you made a song with and unless you have like the funds to you know yeah, and which is I get that. Though. I never got to the end of that story, which is crazy. We jumped around. It was, Anyway, I met A Boogie okay. by, by Mr. White, and I know him. I only know A Boogie because of Mr. White, and I like to say that. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, and right. And respect to him and Rican who makes that song, Savage, and they had the verse from Boogie, and I know Boogie, and Boogie signed off on the verse, and then he signed off on Atlantic to let me have the verse, and the then we put great. it out. And that song parlayed me into a financial situation and allowed me to do for myself and never have to work another nine to five again. So That's fucking I didn't tight. get rich. So- I didn't get rich, but I got rich off of it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I got I you got, got free. You, you got rich in the way where you don't have he to work nine me. to five anymore. They freed me. Not he. They freed me. You know what I'm saying? Because Swear. there was a lot of parties that came in, and they they didn't necessarily get as freed as me. Because I benefited the most from right. that, that in interaction, per se. That person, that one interaction. So, I, you know what I mean? All due respects to wherever walks in life we all went after that. You know, in due time, you know, Boogie, I shout out to Boogie. I love High Bridge. They always show me love. I just dropped a new single. My shout out to the High Bridge. Shout out to High Bridge. They, they reposted. They, you know what I'm saying? They mm-hmm, they, they mm-hmm. tag my shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, people always ask, like, yo, why ain't Boogie put you on? Wait. I'm like, hey, Boogie did put me on. He came back. Yeah. We, we, we met at a time we both was nothing. And he became something and allowed me to... Allow me to ride. You know, it's his funny. Coattail I saw that. I saw that into video. a good financial situation. I saw situation. that video of you and him, and yeah. he looked mad young. We were both young as shit. That's so fucking. That, that's what. That's what made me go. This is fucking tight as shit. Because like, a boogie in that video is like super young. Keep going down. Yeah. This one right here. It was my birthday, bro. And my birthday just passed. No, and crazy. even that one, bro. It's one you guys are both in Which, the room. You're all like just chilling or whatever. That one. Uh, oh, that's his, that's the first. That's the first time yes, I saw Boogie yes. That's since one. he had... I watched this one today. I'm like, okay, yo, man. Jim. Okay, that says December 6, 2016, I posted it. I think I posted it in real time, if I'm not mistaken. Bro, that's crazy. That's the first bro. time of me seeing Boogie since I met him the first time in 2014. That's a, Now, okay, imagine you seeing Holy your friend shit. again, and now he's a Boogie. Now he's a fucking superstar. And they thought I would... Okay, so like... My boy, when Mr. White called me to come, he's like, yo, I got this kid. This kid's dope. He reminds me of you. Like, I told you I met Rock and, like, uh, Mr. White. I keep calling him Rock, but his producer name is Mr. White. 
I get, I met Mr. White, right? Mm-hmm. And I freestyle for him. Uh, and he got cool with me, gave me all the CDs, taught me how to rap, like structure my shit. Uh, long story short, we go years, blah, blah, blah. Years later, he calls me. He's like, yo, I'm seeing another you. I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, he's like, you're working with Cash Money. I know you're doing your thing right now, but can you come check out this kid? Like, I fuck with him. I think he's dope. I'm trying to produce him. Uh, I come through. I come to the studio one night, one night only. Bro, this is like, this is nothing but God. I come to the studio one night, one night only. Go, we go. I come to the studio one night on a random night like this, two hour drive back from Miami. Mm-hmm. So I'm about that life. I you come, are about that life. I come to Port St. Lucie. I will, I'll, give, I'll give you a home for that. Shout out to the home. He's about that fucking life. About that life boy. Are you going to drive two hours for an interview? Yeah. You got to no, put Jim that Harbor. work in, bro. You got to do your footwork. You got to do your groundwork. Respect. So I came to meet this kid. I, he's not even a boogie. Just, his name is Artist. He's like, oh, I got this Artist, kid. Artist, yeah. Ah, yeah, like. yeah. So I come to meet Artist. There's a pic- I have the picture. I got to find it on Twitter. It's like deep in my Twitter. It's like the first thing I ever posted. Mm-hmm. So is Boogie's in the studio. He's on house arrest. So you know, he only has like an hour left. I get there like he's a He's got nine. the ankle bracelet on? Ankle bracelet on. You got to leave at 10. You know, there's no bracelet on, but he has to get by home by 10. Damn. It's juvenile probation thing, whatever. He was juvenile? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, he was like him. what, like 17 when you met him? Yeah. He was, it wasn't 18. So yet. you, holy shit, dude. He was like 16, 17. He had to be like 16, 17. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. Dude. So, yeah, he, um, anyways, I got like an hour with this kid. He tries to record this. He was recording this song, and he and I try to sing the hook. He's like, "Yo, you try the hook because you can like sing and shit." Because he liked this my song called "All on You." Mm-hmm. Uh, Mr. White had played him "All on You." That's the only reason why Boogie like cared for my musical input. Yeah, he's working on his first like song ever, but he cared for my musical input because I had a tight ass song that he could hear and he knew like, oh, okay, he knows what the fuck he's talking about. Maybe a little bit, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So he kind of fake listened to me. He don't know me from a can of paint. He not really talkative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's very introverted at the moment, and he's just like. I'm not saying too much though. I'm just like ah, this way, whatever. You know, I talk a lot. Yeah, so yeah. He's like, <laughs> like he's like, which I like, by the way. Appreciate it. A lot of people I, hate it. I love it. I so love the fact he's, you're he's like, he's like, he's like, all right, like he's like, you try to sing it, and I was like, because it was kind of like very Meek Millish, like what he was rapping like. Yeah. And he was like, I was like, the hook, like it needs to be melodic, like, and he's like, he's like, oh, you try to sing it, and I was like, all right, and I get in the booth, and like the engineer. You know, I pulled the um. You ever seen uh? What's the move with Prestige Worldwide? Um, Brennan and uh, Step Brothers. Is it oh, Step Brothers? Um, when they go to the the Catalina wine mixer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, you know, my voice not right, and like, he's <laughs> yeah, like the air yeah, temperature. Yeah. Like I'm doing all that type of goofy shit. And then like yeah. in the studio, like nah, I can't sing. Like yo, I'm not, I'm not prepared. I'm, I'm not ready. I'm, I'm got no tea. <laughs> so I get in the booth. It sounds whack, right? Boogie looks at me, he looks kind of whack. He's like, I'm like, nah, that ain't it. I think you need to do it. Like, it's a personal song. It was a song that's called Temporary. It's one of the, it's, I think, if not the first song that blew up on his SoundCloud. Two weeks really? later, he, wow. really, he 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 goes back to the studio. That night, I made him for one hour. We have this conversation. I try to do a hook. We get cool, though. Yeah. He's like, he from Bronx, I'm from Brooklyn. We get cool as fuck. Like, we never talk again after that day. I'm just cool with Mr. White. It's my man's. Right. right? So right, right. later I'm fucking with White. Boogie, like, Mr. White calls me, like, maybe like a year and a half later. So now this is that that video. Like, that week, the one you see in the 2016 one. Yeah. So Temporary ended up on his first mixtape. Mm-hmm. So that's one of his first songs that blew up. Um, but And you're on that shit. No. No. No, you're this not. Is, that's why I said this is this is what's meant to be. What's what's for you is for you, right? Mm-hmm. That wasn't for me. That wasn't for me, but I was meant to know him then for what's going to happen for me later. Right. So you could be mad that your son, who this person, this kid blows up, but you, why? You know what I'm saying? Like, right. That's, there's no, it was only love. I never, I don't got no hate in my heart. I'm a Brooklyn kid. Like, we, we taught, like, being a hater is some sucker shit. It's like, some sucker shit for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, there's yeah, no, yeah, yeah. no hate. It only in my comes heart. from below. Right. It only comes from below. So it was always it love. Comes from above. And that's I think that's the only thing that ever intrigued artists at the time to who I was. There was no like mm-hmm. every correction or um positive criticism I gave him for that night mm-hmm. was out of pure love. There was no he knew like it was pure. It was just like, I don't know, I'm not saying I'm hundred percent right, but this is what I think. 
You know right, what I'm saying? Right, right, right. And it's honest. It wasn't on no You're being hate. real in yourself in the moment. That's it. Yeah. And I told him honestly that I'm not meant to be on the hook. I can't figure out how to catch the cadence or catch the vibe for it. Mm-hmm. And I think you need to do it in your way and however that way is. And two weeks later, we get the temporary that he has. And a year and a half later, he has a record deal. And he's calling my son, Mr. White, to come to Tampa. Um, they were in Tampa, I think. Yeah, they were in Tampa doing a show. And he calls Mr. White. I guess they had already been talking. Mr. White already peeped that he's blowing up in New York because he oh, does something shit. on SOBs. He's on World Star. I don't know none of this. I'm, I'm out of the loop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. White calls me like, yo, remember, 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 hey, Boogie, remember artist? Remember artist, the kid that came, you came to the studio to come meet? And I'm like, yeah, he's like, yo, he just called me and he's like, he's like the number one artist in New York right now. I was like, get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. What are you talking about? He's like, bro, Google A Boogie with the hoodie right <laughs> now. So I Google A Boogie. Yeah. <laughs> this kid yeah. got millions of plays on YouTube. What's, what happened? What, what happened? He's like, I don't know, but he's in Tampa tonight, and he wants us to drive up there and come see him. And I was like, We out. You know, I'm about that yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We you are. Out. Yes, you are. He had yes, just got are. off work, and he didn't want to drive. But he had work overnight. I was like, He's like, if you drive, we can go. Yeah. He jumped in his car. We drove his car. He put gas in that bitch. We went up there, and we ain't got a dollar trying to get no front. We pull up to see Boogie. We go with him. He takes us to a couple clubs. He does a couple walkthroughs. He makes like fifty thousand in that night with him, cash, and I'm back in the business. I'm drawn right back to the music business immediately. Like, oh, this is possible. I've actually seen it's someone possible, I yeah, know that you know made it do this shit. Yeah, I don't know how he did it, but he did it, and I need to find out more. I will say, Big Dog, it's been a great conversation. Fuck okay, yeah, bro. If you want to plug any social medias or anything. Go ahead and look into that camera and Yo. swing away. All right, so I'm going to put this joint down. <laughs> and uh, follow me. First and foremost, we got to get this TikTok popping. So give me the TikTok at Gem Heart Music. And y'all go, like, use the audio and do some things with it. I don't know. Be creative. Make that shit go viral, man. Yo, send your boy viral one time. You know what I'm saying? You know? I'm going to give you a lot if you send me viral just once. I'll give you a lot for that. Fuck with the algo. Yeah. But nah, um, then, you know, the only thing I really like, I'm jacking is my my Instagram at Gemheart G M H E A R T. Um, that's G E M H E A R T Gemheart. Um, and I'm pretty much Gemheart across the board. Yo, run up my YouTube numbers too, please. Get them please. YouTube numbers up, man. Because they know? they do not reflect my Apple streaming numbers and my SoundCloud streaming numbers or my Spotify streaming numbers. Like, so we gotta. Get them up. You know what I'm saying? Appreciate y'all. I will lead the forefront of that mission right there, you know? Yeah. I appreciate, you know what I mean, you bring me on the show for sure. Of course, dude. Same Honestly, way. I feel like me and you would have talked all night. It's midnight right now. Yeah, we could have rocked another blowing. three hours. We could have yeah. another three hours. I had no idea it was even midnight. I was like, yo, it's got to be at least mm-hmm. 9, 30, 10 o'clock. It's fucking midnight. Only thing I wish. Dude, we knocked out three-hour podcasts like it was nothing. Quick. Quick work. Like You're I'm- natural, dude. Appreciate it. You're a fucking natural. You're Appreciate a great it. conversationalist. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know what's great? I, I love you, having guests on that like to talk. But Makes you my kept job it, easier. It was because we could talk. Like, because there's plenty of people I get around and I don't say shit. I mean, I'm the same way. That's just because they. The vibe's not right. It's not even a vibe. Like, they, they don't even got the, they don't got the frequency to me. Like, to me, like, I prejudged them. I mean, I could have been yeah. wrong. I prejudged them. I'm like, ah, I can't talk to this. So, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. He didn't think I'm nuts. He didn't think I'm fucking. We're just not gonna be on the same page. Yeah, I've been, uh, I've been there. Yeah. So you just like, oh, you like pizza? Yeah, me too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, it's very service level. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, nah. And then they're like, you like burgers? I'm like, no. Nah. And they're like, nah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad we fucking got deeper than that, dude. That's <laughs> yeah, yeah. We passed burgers and pizza. No, nah, you're very, you're very insightful, dude. Like I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed this interview a lot, man. I mean, yeah, th- three hours. This is probably the, this is the longest real boy radio episode we've ever done. Oh, I'm, and like, I haven't even like even begin to chop the audio yet. I might, I might like. This is legendary, fucking gem heart, dude, and this motherfucker, bro. Uh, like I said, I appreciate you coming by, man. I know it was a journey to get here, but your time is very appreciated over here, man. Thank you. You. Your wisdom, everything you talked about, man. I just, I really, really enjoyed it a lot. I mean, obviously, because three hours flew by like it was 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was real boy Shout radio. Shout out to the Russells that you just put me on to. That's just fire, right? Russells Reserve, Ed, Kentucky I'm telling Strain, you, man, Barbie all my whiskey. whiskey driners, man. Russells Ten-year. Reserve is... That's hey, the hey, you guys, you guys better pay my boy because he put me on and I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm jacking your shit now, so... We jacking Russells Reserve out here, bro. Hey. 
I'm gonna tag him in this video. We yeah. posted him. We posted him. Yo, tag. Russell, cut the check, Russell. Yo, cut playing. the check, man. Or at least come in the boy to free the bottles, man. You know? Yeah. Come on, save me an expense. And cut the check. <laughs> Still cut the cut check. The check sure. it, even if it's a small check, you gotta cut something. You come, cut me something. Show some Fuck. love. You know? Drink enough of your shit, man. Yeah. It's real boy. Bringing the realest. Real boy radio. It's been a great episode. Gem Hart. Elijah. Appreciate you holding me down in the background. Yo. Y'all have a great One night. One time for Elijah, real boy radio. One time for the radio. We'll give him a horn bottle. Yeah. We out, baby. When I was trapped inside your love, couldn't break the chains. I asked God to strength for me, pray to keep me sane. I was so numb to the feelings, I felt like no came. I was so lost up in your drugs, I couldn't see a thing. All I